Minneapolis, Minnesota, the host site of tonight's 2021 NCAA Men's Gymnastics National Championships. The first time we've held this event in 728 days. It is good to be back. 12 teams in the qualifiers yesterday between two sessions. Those are the six that advanced to tonight's championship round. The Discover National rankings coming in. Minnesota, the 10 seed, the lowest seeded team to advance past the qualifiers in at least a decade. They will push their Big Ten brethren, Michigan, at the top of those ranks. Oklahoma is the number one seed overall and potentially the favorite coming in. We welcome you to Minneapolis. He is John Roethlisberger, the three-time all-around NCAA champion and the three-time Olympian. Joel Godet and John, you talk to these coaches to a man. They have all been to the Olympics in one capacity or another, but tonight is their favorite meet of the year. This meet is incredible. You're gonna have six events going on at one time. It's a six-ring circus. You're gonna see the greatest gymnasts on the planet, world-class athletes, future Olympians, and it's not gonna be decided till that last gymnast lands. Oklahoma comes in as the number one seed, but maybe not the favorite coming into this. You think that could be Stanford, why? Well, I think Stanford comes in, they're not the highest ranked team, but they come in with the highest start value. Start values are so important. Head coach Tom Galimi knows that. He has been training his team all season for this day. No other meet mattered, and if they can hit, they're gonna be tough to beat. Mark Williams, he knows how to win championships. He's done it nine times. They are the number one ranked team, but he even admits, he goes, we might need a little help from Stanford to make some mistakes, and we gotta be perfect, but they could win. Kurt Goler, he's won championships as well. Michigan is on a roll. They absolutely destroyed the field at the Big Ten Championships. Didn't have a great qualification to get in here, but that might just give them the edge. But the Cinderella story, Mike Burns and the Minnesota Golden Gophers, they were not supposed to be in this final. They had an incredible prelims, they made it in, and this is supposed to be the last season of Minnesota men's gymnastics, and what a way to go out if it is being here at the finals. Mike Burns buoyed by an all-arounder yesterday. We'll get to him in a second, but Brody Malone has to be the favorite. He's the defending champ. He's awesome. He's got everything you want to see in a great athlete. He's got the big-time skills. He's consistent. He has got a great chance as well to make the Olympic team this summer. you got to consider him the guy to beat. But Michigan, they've got a couple of studs on their side as well. Cameron Bach, Paul Judah, they were in the battle for the Big Ten Championship a couple weeks ago. They're also going to be in the fight to make an Olympic team this summer. But you know what? He's back in town, and it's Shane Wiskus. And he was at the Olympic Training Center most of the year because of COVID training there, but he came back for the Big Ten Championships, shared the all-around title there, and he looked unbelievable in the qualification round. Minnesota will be on his back. They'll only go as far as he takes it. Scored better than an 86 in the qualification round yesterday. You called this a six-ring circus. That may not be enough rings. Six events competed simultaneously. They will go in three pairs of two. If you watched the women's championships earlier on today, the scoring will be much different tonight. It is a lot different. Women's scoring is out of a 10. The men's is out of open-ended. It can go as high as you want, as much difficulty as you want. To get to that score, you start with the, the execution. It starts at a 10.0. All the deductions come out of that 10. Then you add the value of the 10 most difficult skills the athlete does. You put those two totals together, and that is their final score. And it's five up, five count. They can't drop a low score. If you have a miss, you got to count it. Justin Spring in his 11th season as the head coach at Illinois, former Olympian back in 2008, leading the Illini in. They were the eighth seed coming in yesterday. Victorious out of the first session. Chuck Jumelka never made it to the Olympics. And John, we talked about it off the top. 1979, winning the NCAAs, his most incredible memory. And he knows how to win championships. He's been on many championship teams as an athlete, and it's been a slow build for Chuck Schmelka and the Nebraska Cornhuskers to get their team to where they are today, to be a contender for a national championship. They beat Oklahoma in their qualification session. That was big. Hit in all 30 of their routines. Now we talk about six teams that are competing, and then we show you Penn State. Jack Baldwin qualifying in as an individual. The top three individuals that competed in the qualifiers yesterday whose teams did not advance will all appear here tonight as well. And it was a heartbreaker for Penn State. They were finishing on vault, and they just had some mistakes and opened the door, so to speak, for Minnesota to step in. Minnesota hit when it counted at the end. All, everything was on the line with Shane Wiskus' Peril of Aratini hit it. They got in. Penn State, unfortunately, just qualified individuals. But this horse routine looks sweet. A little slow going to the handstand, but that was 
Fantastic. Penn State knows about Pommel Horse. Steven Netarasik, former Nissan Emery winner, he still trains in State College with all of those guys. Yeah, Steven Netarasik, man, he is the real deal on Pommel Horse. Actually, trying to find a way to get onto that Olympic team as an individual, he might just do it. This is Josh Seltzer now, the ring specialist, 18th in the country coming into the NCAA championships. Nice Maltese to open up. You're going to see a lot of the Maltese strength holds. There's another one from the swing. You're going to see a lot of those from the best ringmen in the country. If you're going to get a big score on rings, it's almost mandatory you know how to do a Maltese. Season high is a 13-8 on the stories. In the back up rise. Looked like he was going to try to hold the legs together. Plunge, but did not. Nonetheless, it should be a major break. Said 13-8 is the best. Cameron Bach with a stuck dismount. NQS coming in from Michigan, 14-3. So Seltzer's in the neighborhood of some of the better ringmen in the country. Nicely done. Top eight, you're an All-American, and that's certainly what Seltzer is hoping for. It was a heartbreaker for Ohio State yesterday as well, competing in the opening session. You mentioned Penn State. Ohio State was edged out by Illinois as we get a look at Amari Sewell here on Bolt. Trains a two and a half. And he does it. Small hop, he did land with his foot outside those lines. Bit of a heartbreak for Iowa yesterday too. A lot of people thought in that last session it would be Iowa-Penn State battling for that third spot. They forgot about Minnesota, but a heartbreaking season for Iowa along with Minnesota scheduled to discontinue their program after this season as well. So hoping for some good individual performances from the Hawkeyes. Speaking of Iowa, here is Bennett Huang. Phenomenal gymnast. He competed in the all-around in 2019 and finished ninth, but he has big things in his future. John, he was accepted to Juilliard last week. I can barely say the name Juilliard. <laughs> I mean, these guys are, all these teams are just full of impressive young men. And Bennett's a great gymnast, a great all-arounder for Iowa this season. Think about how much time these young men put in to train gymnastics at this level and then how much time he has to put in to play cello at that level as well. That is his time and his dedication. It's ironic the similarities between playing a musical instrument and gymnastics. It's all about repetition, and you can tell Bennett has put in some repetition on that event. Nicely done, young man. Repetition and perfection. Naval Academy came in as the ninth seeded team yesterday. Did not advance as a team. Several individuals are here, though. Ryan McVeigh on the still rings, a season best 14. And it wasn't their day yesterday in the qualifications, but I'll tell you what, one of the biggest stories in men's gymnastics, every program's gone through shutdowns and COVID issues throughout the course of the season in the fall, but I challenge anybody to find a tougher one than what the Naval Academy went through. Starting February 28th, they had a 22-day shutdown. When I say a shutdown, they were, they were allowed out of their dorm rooms two hours a day. And this isn't to go into the gym and do gymnastics. This is, hey, if you want to run around in circles outside, here's your chance. And that might work for a track athlete, but that doesn't work for a gymnast. And they could only do it with their roommates. Technically, it was a 22-day restriction of movement is the, is the technical term. It's, it definitely was that. I don't know if you're doing, like, giants on a tree branch or what, but, man, for a gymnast, it's, it can't be any harder than it is for a gymnast. Let's put it that way. And McVay gets that double-double. That's a tough dismount. Nicely done. Second of the two individuals competing on rings. Here is Jack Freeman. We are now into the teams. He is first up on floor for Oklahoma. 14th in the country on floor exercise this season. Nice double twist and double back. Put up a 13-8-3 yesterday in qualification. Yeah, Oklahoma, number one team in the nation on this event, but they got to come out and they got to show it here. Got to have clean landings. We will talk about landings on every event, but floor in particular. Gymnasts will typically do at least six passes. That means they have to land at least six acrobatic skills like that right there. That was a deduction. Feet slid ever so slightly. And then landing deductions are just brutal in this sport. If you take a hop or a step, it can be one-tenth, it can be three, it can be five. 
And typically the judges don't take a one. It's got to be a really small movement in the foot to be a one-tenth deduction. So you're thinking each landing that you take a movement. Let's see right here. Triple twist. That probably was a one-tenth deduction. But you also got to watch the shoulders. If they're really bent over when they land, that's also a deduction. They can pile up quick. But that was a great start. It's a huge rotation for Oklahoma. Had a season low on the floor yesterday, even though you said number one ranked team in the country. They only finished fourth out of the six teams that qualified. This Michigan pommel horse lineup is unbelievable. Number one in the country, they had three guys in the top three, four in the top eight from their session of the prelims. This is the same event they started on in the qualification round. Actually, every team competing tonight is starting on the same event that they started in the qualification round, which is kind of unique. Michigan has never had an individual pommel horse champion as well, so this could be the year, and that's a good start. That was fantastic. He was fighting in that routine. That was not perfect for him, but he minimized any major errors and certainly avoided uh, the catastrophic fall from the pommel horse. They gotta be happy with that. It's your first look at Stanford on the vault. This is Curran Phillips. Nice. We've got three teams that are number one ranked in the country on their number one ranked events. So Stanford's number one on vault, Michigan number one on palm horse, and Oklahoma number one on floor exercise, and that was a fantastic effort. And important to build big numbers. When you're on your strength early, get your feet underneath of you. And it's important for Stanford to hit that vault rotation because that's the highest scoring event in men's gymnastics. They want to have a big lead after one rotation. And this is the sophomore out of Wales, Josh Cook for Illinois. He has become such a huge staple as Illinois has been ravaged by injuries this year and other things. Clay Mason Stevens, their best all-arounder, is back home in Australia training for the Olympic trials. That's a, a story in and of itself. But yeah, the, the challenges this Illini team has had this year, Coach, Coach Justin Spring is just kind of, he shakes his head when he talks about it. It's, it's been brutal. Every team has had their challenges, but Illinois, with the injuries as well on top of it, has been rough and that was not good getting up very slowly just did not turn over off the rings missed a handstand in there as well so that is catastrophic start for the lineup first look at minnesota this is victor perez his head coach calls him victory perez well they need to be perfect as we said minnesota big underdog even just to make it in here it would be a huge accomplishment for them to be as high as fifth, I would, I would say, but bottom line is they just need to do their best gymnastics. There's no defense in this sport. You just gotta go out and hit your stuff. And this routine so far, three Takachevs, a variety of different Takachevs done there. Will be big time for Minnesota. If you stick it, it's an extra bonus tenth. There's one. Green flags up. That's the start on an apparatus that most teams don't want to start on. Absolutely not. I hated starting on high bar as a gymnast. Your nerves are at their, you know, their pinnacle, and you gotta go up and you gotta live on the edge, and that is what high bar is all about. But they came out in the qualification round, and they were outstanding on, a, on that event, trying to replicate it again. Brandon Wynn here on the vault, the freshman for Stanford. Man alive, that's just so good. Their leadoff had a 14-7-3-3. That is a massive vault score, and that, that's gonna be a big number as well. Marcus Shears, after a couple of 13s here for Michigan. 13s are good scores on Pommel Horse. Those are very good scores, especially for your first couple guys up. Now Marcus is capable of a 14. He has broken that this season. 12th in the country here. It's gonna take epic performance on Pommel Horse today to break a 14, and that is not gonna do it. So he's got, a, he's got 30 seconds to get back up on the apparatus. He kind of looked just like a circle, wasn't quite comfortable throughout that routine. And you really want to get a rhythm on Pommel Horse, and certainly he broke it there. Now it's important, this score is going to count to their team score, so it's so important he gets up and finishes clean. You can't let one mistake lead to another. And 
that's a good finish, but I tell you what, Michigan's gonna be kicking themselves a little bit because this is an event they have an advantage over the entire field. Come out first, hit five horse routines, and they would put themselves in such a great position that they gave one away there. It'll be a big spot for Paul Judah and Cameron Bott, the two Olympic hopefuls who are the penultimate and the anchor on the head. This is Dylan Young now, the sophomore from California, in the third spot on parallel bars for Nebraska. A nice start for them, two high 13s. They'd like to get into the 14s, if at all possible. Dylan starts from a 14-7. It's so hard to have less than a point in deductions. By score, this is Nebraska's second lowest event. They're seventh in the country on parallel bars, but their coach Chuck Jamelka said, hey, we're good, we're darn good. Just haven't put it together yet. That was a good routine. He had some difficulty in there. And he likes it. This Nebraska. is the all-around champion defending Brody Malone. Here we go. And this kid trying to get another NCAA championship and a team title. It's weird, it's weird to say back-to-back -back titles when it's been two years, but it would be. Back to the horse. We mentioned Paul Judah. Here he is. A sophomore from the Chicagoland area. He is second in the country. A season high 14 3 5 here. Watch this work right here. Flair up to the handstand, back down. That is ridiculous. Are you, you see people do that on floor, but obviously you have such a bigger margin for error on floor. This is sweet gymnastics. And the style that he uses here minimizes the risk for deduction traveling the horse. It does, it, it helps with that skew, and skew is when you're kind of not square to the length of the horse. And that is just magnificent. I've got pommel horse envy from that guy. Those are all skills I tried to do when I was a gymnast and it wasn't gonna happen. That's awesome. Man, that was a pressure situation as well. Michigan hasn't had a pommel horse champion throw down the early gauntlet here as we go back to floor in Oklahoma. Oklahoma is crushing this floor rotation. and They've got a couple big routines to finish. All scores into the 14s. Morgan's an amazing story. Had meningitis as, a, as an infant. Did not think that he would survive, lost had a stroke during that whole process and lost the use of part of his body, had to relearn how to use a whole half of his body. And it's been a it's been a challenging road from the time he was an infant. But man, what a story. And to be a gymnast after all that, probably the sport that requires the most, most physically demanding sport, one of them, is, is just amazing. He is the floor champion at his conference, the MPSF. Went 14-1-3 yesterday in qualifying, and it's not always the most natural, Mark Williams said, but he does his darndest to make it look that way. And you like to see that. <laughs> look out, Oklahoma. They are coming out of the gate strong, stuck landing at the end. Bonus 10. This is now the rotation to watch here for Minnesota, and the particular routine, because Dante McKinney Mike Burns said was the spark routine in their season high on high bar last night. Yeah, he was amazing and he can fly. Just floats 15 feet in the air over a stationary steel bar. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Don't tell me with a good time. <laughs> that is just awesome. And this is just a carbon copy of his performance in the preliminaries. Got one stuck landing in this rotation. Can it be two? Not quite. Hop four. That's probably a three-tenth hop. And it's funny, you can tell by the body language they want to stick those landings, but that was great nonetheless. And we saw what Paul Judah did. It is scored a 13-8. Cameron Bach, what say you? They need a big one. I actually thought Paul Judah's score should have been a little higher than a 13-8. It felt like a 14 to me, but that, oh my goodness. A major break, but he stayed on and he actually covered it up pretty well. It turned it into a scissor. He did. It will be a significant deduction. His leg bent and hit the horse, but, and he'll lose some difficulty. But I'll tell you what, only a veteran can do what Cameron Bach is doing right now. And I'll tell you what, you can't win a national title on the first event, but moments like that 
avoiding catastrophe for Michigan could pay dividends and mean the difference when you get to the end. Well, he's the Big Ten champion. He's number one in the country for a reason. As we take a look now at Gage Dyer, who's coming back from an injury, missed six weeks earlier this season with a muscle injury to his lat, reworked some routines so that he doesn't have to use his arms as much. There's no back hand springing in this floor routine. And John, it would knock most gymnasts out. That pass he just did, the double twisting, double layout. You can't tell me this guy's ever had an injury. He's like, he's Robocop, man. It is incredible. Look at that, double front half. I will be very interested to see Stanford's vault score compared to Oklahoma's floor score. Because you should absolutely have a lead after vault if you're Stanford, but the floor routines that Oklahoma has done in this first rotation are sick. The scores, the last one, Morgan Seiler, a 14-6, and Gage Dyer with this routine capable of even more. Starts from a 16-1. Can he stick it? Oh, you gotta be kidding me! The specialist of the year! Again, from Michigan on horse with Cameron Bach with that save. This floor rotation for Oklahoma. When you get to the finish line, it's moments like that could mean the difference. They're nine-tenths back of Stanford between floor and vault right now. That is, that is not good for Stanford, I'll tell you that right now. There's Brandon Briones now on the vault. Oh, that was so good, man. Heavyweights, just body blow after body blow. Wow, this is gonna be awesome. The reigning National Freshman of the Year, Brionis there. We now go to the best name in all of collegiate sports. This is Crew Bold on the high bar. With Minnesota discontinuing the program, Crew Bold will go to Michigan next year. Last chance to wear the Gophers Leo. And Bold is exactly what you need to be on this event with skills like that. Oh my goodness. He scrambled some eggs on the last part of that to get his hands on. Woo. Oh, nice combination right there. That's the thing about high bar, is you want to be an arm's length away. You don't want to catch with bent arms, but the margin for error is literally a matter of inches to get your hands perfectly on the bar, and he has done it so far. They've got to stick some landings. They cannot afford to take any steps, and he does it, man. Minnesota keeping the magic alive. Four routines in, a 52-699, and building for Minnesota as we take a look at the anchor, Zach Martin here for Stanford, needing a big ball. Look at these scores, these are unbelievable. Can they finish with an exclamation point? Oh! <laughs> yeah, unreal. I might have to break out the toothpick in a club sandwich early tonight. This is incredible. Zach Martin is the second best vaulter in the country. It's the only event he has done every meet. That right there is 100% why. That was amazing. He'll actually start from a 15-3 because he's stuck and he gets the bonus 10th. I mean, if there's a 15 to be had in this competition, it should be right there. Now Shane Wiskus onto the high bar. He Maybe your favorite outside Brody Malone for the all-around title? Yeah, and you know, he he might be my outright favorite. I don't want to play favorites, but he's uh, he has looked so poised. And, you know, coming in late in the season, he went to the training center because he was worried about his training being interrupted. Not a lot different than, honestly, some of the Stanford athletes as well. Stayed away from campus until they got uh, closer to the end of the season. And uh, that's exactly what he did. Take a look at your State Farm State of Success. Those are the two young men that tied for the all-around championship at the Big Ten Championships two weeks ago as Wiskus now mounts the high bar. He was the all-around runner-up last time to Brody Malone in 2019. He is this year's Nissan Every Award winner. And John, that's basically the Heisman Trophy of men's gymnastics. Big moment right there. The man competed one regular season meet. That's his reputation. Two big releases. Keep in mind, obviously Minnesota, they want to put 30 routines together tonight, 30 hit routines, but this man right here wants nothing more than to win a national all-around championship, and especially in this year, 
the challenges facing all these collegiate programs, he would love nothing more to bring that glory home to the University of Minnesota. Has not happened here since 1983. Some guy named John Roethlisberger. And a stick! Oh, oh, baby! And that is the thing about Shane that has just been a big change over the last couple of years. He just goes up, it doesn't look hard for him. The greatest gymnasts in the world, they do the hardest stuff and they make it look like it's just a day at the office. I'll tell you what, that was not a day at the office. That was big time gymnastics. Danny Graham now on the still rings, seventh best in the country on this apparatus. He was eighth at the Big Ten Championships. There's one of those Maltesers you pointed out earlier. Did you just age me, by the way? You said 1983. I'm sorry, 1998. <laughs> 93. <laughs> I'm old, but I'm not that old. Did I say 83? Yeah, you did. That's I'm sorry. Right. I, I look older than you. Thanks, buddy. Danny Graham kind of stepping into those shoes that Illinois always seems to have. A great ringman, Alex Diab, NCAA champion for them. Nicely done. Yamawaki right to a backup prize cross. Man, see those arms working. That shoulder position is so important. Yeah, you got to be flat. You got to keep those shoulders in a level line with the ring. He was almost a little bit low on that cross position, to be honest with you. Illinois has not had a great ring rotation. They really need a big one here, and that includes a stuck landing. Focusing double. Oh, it takes that step. But other than that, that was a pretty darn good set. And back to Minnesota. This will not count toward the team score, but this is Mike Moran competing individually in the all around. Great opportunity for some of these athletes who don't make that five-person lineup. They can still be added to the rotation, compete in the all-around, have an opportunity to become an All-American. Mike has been the rock for Minnesota this year. With Shane Wiskus at the Olympic Training Center, he has stepped up as the all-arounder, took some off of his plate as the season went on, but he looked at his coach, Dan, uh, Mike Burns, and said, hey, if I'm gonna do four events, I may as well do six. And you need that, especially this year. You need to have guys that do a lot of events. Shuffled those heels a little bit there at the end, but uh, got through it. Nice job, Mike. That is rotation one in the books. Catch your breath for a second. If you get the feel for how things might go tonight, we have rotation number two coming your way from Minneapolis in just a gym. NCAA Championship Gymnastics on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Discover, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. And by Dr. Pepper, the official soft drink of the Big Ten Conference. Minneapolis, Minnesota, we take a look at the scores after one rotation. Stanford started on vault. You would expect they would be in the lead 73-4-3-2. Shane Wiskus was absolutely dominant on the high bar for Minnesota. The most remarkable scoring, though, came on vaults, where we saw Zach Martin have a 14-9, the second best vault in the country this year. And then how about the floor for Oklahoma, the team that Michigan is chasing right now? Gage Dyer, a 15-2-6-6. Not only is that the best score on floor this year, that is the best score on any apparatus, bar none, in 2021. And, I, and a season high for Oklahoma on that event after I think you told us yesterday a season low. Um, amazing, and I, and I gotta say, the thing that jumps out at me is we see Michigan's horse rotation. That jumps out at me, first of all, a 65 for them. That is well off of their season high by about four points. But Oklahoma's about five tenths behind Stanford right now, but that is a win unequivocally for Oklahoma because that if they had a good typical floor rotation, even a very good one for them, they should be a point, maybe a point and a half, if not a little more behind Stanford's vault. So the fact that they are within five tenths of a point, yeah, Stanford beat them in that rotation, but I tell you what, I think Oklahoma won that rotation. That's big for them. Oh, and that was an awkward landing. It's Manavong who we will talk about as we get through the Illinois 
uh, vaults here today. He, he's he's gone a little viral famous. He made Colbert, so we'll, we'll touch on that coming up as, uh, as we get through the vault rotation. Here is Stanford's vault look. Zach Martin with that 14-9. Yeah, that's 73. 4-3-2, not a season high, but just off a couple tenths off their season high. I mean, really, they couldn't have done any better. They did their job, and if they keep doing that through this competition, they're going to be tough, if not impossible, to beat. But, man, Oklahoma clearly on fire, and Michigan, they put themselves in a big hole early. Nebraska on the parallel bars. You like a 67-2-6 there? Yeah, and let's not forget about Nebraska. They beat Oklahoma and to qualify into these finals. They put up a big score. So, you know, that's 67 266 for them. That's very close to their season high for the year, and that's exactly what you want. You want to be at your best at the end of the year, and it's a long way to go yet. Nebraska looks good. Well, and how good was Nebraska yesterday? They hit on all 30 routines. We were talking with Minnesota's coach, Mike Burns, this morning, and he said, how many times have I hit ever in my career, head coach or assistant coach? three three times in three decades so that's how rare what nebraska was able to accomplish yesterday was oh it's it's hard to do especially in today's gymnastics world where they, it is literally a circus out there it's how much incredibly hard gymnastics can you cram into a routine so the mistakes I'm, honestly tend to be more frequent so what nebraska did was quite impressive uh, minnesota's high bar by the way not as high as they scored in the qualifications although I thought their performances were every bit as good, if not better, on high bar tonight. Iowa will lead things off here on still rings. Not competing as a team, but competing individually. This is Peyton Hobson. Tremendous story and perseverance. He is 10th in the country on still rings. Johnny's a junior. His first two years, he competed in one meet. He's now a captain. And you gotta love that. And I've seen so many great stories. And and really one of the greatest parts about collegiate athletics, if not the greatest part, are guys that walk on, and I've seen it on my own teams, um, teams since I've graduated, they walk on, they battle and battle to get on that one event, or a couple events, or you see even guys that work their way into the all around, and man, the character that they build and the determination, and time and time again, you see them as leaders of teams, and, and that's one of the special parts about gymnastics and, and collegiate sports. Age of instant gratification. Great story of paying off. He was the silver medalist to Cameron Bach on rings at the Big Ten Championships. Nice sequence there. Rings need to be very still. That's why they're called the still rings. Newsflash, Joel. Well, there used to be two ring events. They had the swinging rings. That probably should have been my event, the way I swung them thing. <laughs> Dude, I love, you know, the lost art of a great swing to handstand. That's as good as you can do it. Perfect toe point, nice handstand position. Oh, come on, baby. Just can't stay on his feet. That's a tough landing. You're landing forward. If you're under-rotated, there's just very little you can do about it. Go to the high bar. You know, we talked about the flying rings, by the way. Navy, represented here by Giovanni Gambatisi. They've won national championships individually, five of them on the flying rings. That's amazing. <laughs> I did, I, I, in fact, I did not know. There are other three championships, by the way. They have nine total individual championships, five flying rings, three on the rope climb. That's awesome. And this is a flying high high bar routine right here. Watch this, another one, full twisting Kovac. There's a flying giant. Giovanni has just a, done an outstanding job for the midshipmen and head coach Kip Simon. Trying to become an All-American. Gotta stick this, Giovanni, yes! <laughs> He's loving it. Gotta have fun, man. Isn't that why we're all here? Well, he likes it, and there is a door opening. You go back to the last championships in 2019 from the service academies. Lucas Teixeira was the bronze medalist on horizontal bar. Now Donovan Hewitt, who had an awesome vault yesterday for Ohio State. Oh, a big two and a half. Huge step out of that. Unfortunately, too much power. Hey, add a twist, man. Put another twist on that bad boy. 
now Penn State. The New Zealander, Ethan Dick here, he is competing all around. He's a freshman from Auckland. Keeps himself in balance. 12-6-6 on his first event, the high bar. Very low scoring event though. 12-6-6, not actually a bad score to be quite honest with you. But now, second event floor. Top eight is the ranking to watch. Ethan's progression has been incredible. He joined the team in January coming from New Zealand. So they've just really gotten their hands on him, Randy Jepson and his coaching staff. And he hadn't been an all-arounder until just recently. Did floor for the first time at the Big Ten Championships, still rings for the first time yesterday. Yeah, there's a lot of international athletes on different collegiate teams, men's and women's side, and that has created a whole nother level of challenges here in a COVID world that we live in. Traveling back and forth to your home country, if you're trying to make an Olympic team, that, that totally comes into play, as we've seen with Clay Mason Stevens from Illinois. Nice triple twist. Giving away some steps there at the end. That was a nice triple twist, but he didn't want to stop moving his right foot. Well, you mentioned the quarantine. Ethan Dick will have to quarantine when he goes back to New Zealand for two weeks in a hotel room before his Olympic trials. That is, that is brutal. Alan Camillus now on the pommel horse. This is the first of the teams competing here in the second rotation. And this is where the rubber hits the road for Oklahoma. Mark Williams said this is not a great event for them. It did not go great in the qualifying round. They saw Michigan, the best team in the country, have mistakes on this event. And that's a fantastic start. Not a huge start value, only a 14-6. But man, he hit it clean. He did exactly the job that he was meant to do. Go up there, hit a solid set, get one under your belt and start to build. This is an all around competitor individually, Ryan McVeigh from the US Naval Academy. Simple ball, full twisting, laid out Sukahara or what we call a Kazamatsu. A lower start value, but done very clean, small hop in the lane. Air Force does have competitors here as well. The United States Military Academy had several competing yesterday that did not make it through past the qualifying round. As we now go to the still rings here for Michigan. This is Thomas Paul. We'll see him on a couple of apparatuses today. Just a consistent scorer for Kurt Goldman. Trusts him. And they need to be a little more than consistent, in my opinion. They're the number one team in the country on this event as well. Number one in the country on Pommel Horse, obviously had some troubles there. You can see their 65-5-6-6 that they put up compared to a 69-3-5, which is their season high. So they're putting themselves in a hole early, but Pommel Horse is behind them. It's over. Rings, you just got to hang on, hold your strength parts and stick your dismount, and they will put up a big number here. How do you bounce back? Do you start chasing those four points all night long, or can you not worry about that? You've got to have a short memory in the sport of gymnastics. Whether you hit a great routine or you had a mistake, it has no bearing on what you do next. It's not like there's a defense that's figuring out your offense and you have to adjust. You've got to forget what happened, and you've got to do your job, put your blinders on, Team. And this is nice, very nice Yamawaki sequence, piked into the tuck. Very tough dismount. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the Wolverines, they forgot about Pommel Horse. What? Pommel Horse, we're on ring. Well, they are the number one ring team in the country. So you follow your number one horse team in the country that struggled. You go to another strength as we get Stanford, number one team in this competition by start value. This is Ian Gunther, the junior in the leadoff spot. And they're the number one ranked team in the country on parallel bar. Ian individually is 26. See him three times today. He's the conference champion on rings and horse. This is nice. 
nice so far. He starts with a 15-5. All their start values, mid to high 15s, all the way up to a 16 start value. Watch this dismount right here. I'm gonna get, let you guess what this one's called. Is that a Roethlisberger? That is a Roethlisberger. <laughs> Ian Gunther, my favorite collegiate gymnast currently, pulls out the Roethlisberger, and guess what? He stuck it like a toothpick in a club sandwich, baby. That was awesome. He did it way better than I ever did, <laughs> I can promise you that. On to the vault for Illinois, this is Connor McCool. Undeniable what Justin Spring calls him. Nice double twist. Illinois started slow on the ring. Like Minnesota, a dark horse to get into the finals, but they've had so many injuries, they get one of their athletes back, Hamish Carter, which is a huge advantage to them. Justin Spring said he really thinks they can get into the finals, and then you know what? You just let the chips fall where they may. You hit your gymnastics and go from there. This is Jacob Moore now on the rings after a 13-6 from Thomas Paul. 13-6? And he stuck that dismount. Ain't coming easy today, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he picked up some swing on that. Hard to tell how much because of the angle we're at. It almost looks like a horizontal swing. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a side to side and front to back. What would that be called? An ellipse? An eclipse? I failed geometry, help me out here. <laughs> I think so, it's like the penny at the wishing well. <laughs> yeah, where it spins around. He's got a tough dismount, it's a double twist and double back. Gyroscope. There you go. Big risk on this. Nicely done, just a small hop on the landing. They know it's a long way to go. They started on horse, every other team's gotta go to horse too, and that's where bad things can happen. Speaking of which, head to Oklahoma on the Pablo Horse. This is Morgan Seiler. And bad things have happened. They have an 11-6-6 from Spencer Goodell, who just went. They started off with a nice 13, but gave some of that back. Michigan knows how that works. Well, that's the one weak spot in Spencer's all-around game. And this becomes a huge spot for Morgan Seiler to pick it back up after a missed routine. Oh, the pressure just amps up. Oh, man, those handstands will come up and bite you. That was a pretty darn good routine. He will get hit on that handstand. Gosh, I, I dare I say it could be five tenths. The handstand needs to swing right up to the vertical position. And that is one of the easy ones for the judges to take. The gymnast slows down. You can see it happen right before your eyes. And he'll get hit for that, but hey, the pressure was on, Morgan hit. Logan Myers now here on the vault for Illinois. Follows that 14-2-6-6 for McCool. Another double twist. Very high. And here's where the judging gets a little frustrating because that looked clean, right? Just a small little step with his foot, one-tenth. But his shoulders were so low, the judges are just going to sit there and they are going to move that pencil. Defending all-around champion Brody Malone. He could become the first ever all-around champion in his first two collegiate championships. As a freshman and a junior, of course, there was no championship as a sophomore. That would be big. No gymnast has ever won four times. Is that one that got away ever bite at you? I'm still bitter. I don't want to talk about it. It happened right over on the other side of this building. Got second to Mike Racanelli from Ohio State. Not that I would remember the details. What a hot beverage. Wow. I do, that was an amazing mount right there. Brody was not just the all-around champion, he was also the floor and high bar champion. So three titles as a freshman. Four is the individual record for one championships. He has a 16 start value on this event. He has done a pretty darn perfect routine so far. And double pike dismount. 
Brody Malone, my gosh, he's living up to the billing. Uh, again, like Shane Wiskus, it's just so, it's just business as usual for him. This is James Reed now on rings for Michigan. And Malone kind of, this is gonna sound weird based on what we just said, flies under the radar in the all-around competition. He, he weirdly does. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe we're biased. We're biased to the to the Big Ten, maybe. I mean, Bach wins the Winter Cup. Wiskus comes in with so much hype, and then Malone is saying, don't forget about it. Well, we're certainly not. James Reed is third on still rings in the country. He came in ninth, though, at the Big Tens. His handstands are so straight, Kurt Golder thinks he's probably the most underscored on the team in this event. Well, they've got two mid-high 13 so far. Nice double twisting double. And they're hitting about as well as they can on these first three ring routines. They got two yet to go. Judah and Bach, two of the best in the business. So Michigan clearly rings is a great event to get things right too. You hold on. Not easy to come off of the rings. <laughs> Michael Fletcher now for Illinois on vault. This is about as good as it gets. He won at Big Tens with a two and a half. This is beautiful vault. A little, a little skewed as he came in. Body didn't quite come straight over the vertical on the table. That's why it was a little cockeyed when he landed. Paul Judah now, one of those Olympic hopefuls, uh, hopefuls for the Michigan Wolverines. Sixth in the country on rings. James Reed breaks the 14 barrier for Michigan. These last two guys absolutely capable of doing the same. This is the event Michigan clinched the Big Ten team title. And the one where maybe Judah lost the all-around title. He did. He had a break at the end of his routine. And, and not to say that he would have had it per se had he hit, but he was right there with Wiskus and Bach. And Kirk Golder said he's got a short memory. He's moved on. He's ready to go to the NCAA championships the last couple of weeks. Beautiful swing to handstand. Nice double double. Oh, hop step. You don't like to see the hop step. If you're going to hop or step, do it once. But all oh, other than that landing on the dismount, that was vintage. Judah. Now Wiskus on floor. He was phenomenal yesterday. A 15.1 on floor. That was the first 15 on any apparatus in the country this year. It was bested by Gage Dyer with the 15.266 in rotation one for Oklahoma. Shane has gotten so much better on landings. I mean, he just did a double twist and double back like Gage Dyer. It's, it's like a stick contest to these guys. He did this in the prelims too. It was just like Velcro on the bottom of his feet. That's an easy land. He better stick that one. You don't have to look very far to find out how much this meet and this night means to Shane Wiskus. Every quote out there about what has happened to Minnesota, he takes it personally, and it means so much for him to go out on top in what may be the end of NCAA competition for this men's gymnastics team. Nicely done. Triple twist, and he does it again. It's just automatic for Wiskus. He is pumped, inspiring his team. A nice floor rotation from Minnesota, too. They had improved upon their day one performance, and they put an exclamation point. I don't know if that'll be another 15, but golly, there's one hop on a landing. I'm not sure what else you take. Now Cameron Bond, number one on rings. Michigan has never had a ringman finish on top of the podium. Could it be Bob? That surprises me, as many great gymnasts as Michigan's had. All Judah, 13-6-3-3 on a 15-1 start value. Seems low, but here's the deal with judging. You know, you, they might be low, they might be tough on these athletes, but they just gotta keep it the same through all six rotations. If you're taking a three-tenth on a step, you gotta keep taking three-tenths on that same step throughout the meet. And I talked to one of the head officials before today's competition, that's exactly what we talked about. I said, hey, sometimes I'm critical of you guys, but the thing that matters is you just be consistent. He said, absolutely. 
You just got to keep the deductions from one team from, to another, from one gymnast to another. You got to keep them consistent. Bach with a 14-5 this year. That is the best individual score by any gymnast on rings this season. Another double-double, a -double, little short on that. Good fight, though, from Michigan. Nice rings rotation. Couldn't have asked for a whole lot more. Maybe a couple more stuck landings, but can't everybody ask for that? All right, here's the most famous vault in the country this year. Evan Manavong against Minnesota in a duel. Stuck a Kaz one and a half, wound up on the late show, and he whipped out his vaccine card. Oh, and he did the same thing in the warm-up. I saw him land just like that. Very scary, hyper-extended leg when he landed. Uh, yeah, the vaccine had never had a better promotion than Evan Manavong. Stephen Colbert said, COVID-19 vaccine side effects, you might get a little muscle aches and you might pull off a men's gymnastics vault flawlessly. Justin Springs said that one was the best one he'd ever seen. Two scores in the 12 eights for Stanford. That is not good. And I would love to understand how Brody Malone gets a 13 8 for that barrel of our routine. I am completely baffled on that one. This is where you can make it up. Your MPSF conference champion here, Blake Soon. He's number one in the country. He is a captain for Stanford and a two time All American on the parallel balls. He has uh, been such a great addition to the Stanford team, Tom Bellini tells me. I know his dad, he came to a trip with us, Eugene Soon, came to China with us as an interpreter. Great guy and his young man right there, great athlete and great kid. So this is interesting. Stanford did not put up the numbers you normally would expect. This is gonna be a good meet. It's gonna come down to the last one, I'm telling you. Haven't really gotten a look at Nebraska on high bars. You take a look at those numbers as Dylan King falls in the anchor spot here. 14th in the country. Nice falling. Yeah, pretty decent numbers. You like to see higher than a 12.066 from Christopoulos. Dylan King can keep this going. This is so far outstanding. Three double back skills over the bar. Nebraska hit 30 for 30 yesterday, trying to do it again today. Buy a spot on that podium. After their third place finish at 19. Nicely done, small hop at the end there, but great finish for the Cornhuskers. It's been a long run for Chuck Jamelka's team to try to get back to glory. Nebraska doing its best to join the party. Rotation three coming up next from Minneapolis. Tomorrow, a champion will be crowned in the 2021 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. Iowa takes on Wisconsin. Live coverage begins tomorrow at noon Eastern. That is only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Spring sports extravaganza leads to an extravaganza of trophies. John Roethlisberger, we hear at the NCAA Men's Gymnastics National Championship. Also today, the Women's Gymnastics National Championship and it belongs to the Michigan Wolverines for the first time. Yeah, I got a chance to cover them at the regionals. Bev Plocky and uh, her team get the job done. Only the seventh team in the history of women's collegiate gymnastics to win the NCAA title. And she has had such an amazing career. More Big Ten titles than any other coach of any sport at the University of Michigan. And now she gets her first championship. My hat's off to her. And also Scott Sherman, who used to coach here at Minnesota. Hats off to him as well and, and that team. What a great accomplishment. Stacy Irvin sighting, by the way, right in the middle there. there you in the go. white shirt for the Michigan Wolverines made the trek up here from Florida. After the second rotation, you saw the scores at the bottom. These are the all-around scores. Shane Wiskus at top. You're not happy with Brody Malone. You thought he should be better. No, honestly. I mean, I, the scoring. You're this, happy with this, him. No, I thought his performance on parallel bars was outstanding. He got a 13-8. I'm not sure how you get a 14 if that was a 13-8. And no offense to to the Golden Gopher, I think, you know, Brody should be in a dead heat right now with Shane. Now, point eight, that's certainly, that's not tough to overcome in this sport. A fall is a point off, so a lot can happen. Minnesota 
you know, they're sitting in a pretty sweet spot right now in second place, but they are going to an event. Well, I'm going to be quite frank with you right now. They are not good at Pommel Horse. I don't think they've hit five good routines in one competition this entire year. They got really close in the qualification round. They had one fall uh, and four good routines. So if they can hit five good Pommel Horse routines right here, it will be a big, big moment for that team. We'll start with the individuals here in rotation number three with Christian Marsh from William & Mary. He has freakish strength, so it'll be interesting to see what he pulls out of the bag of tricks here. Six consecutive state championships in club coming to college from Clarksburg, Maryland. He was also a diver. I don't know how that translates to still rings, but I have to imagine, like, shoulder strength pretty good. Slip a little on his knees. That's big time gymnastics right there. I tell you what, man, he is a mile in the air and you're flipping your body over three times. <laughs> Gives me cold sweats just thinking about it. The thing about that, you don't pull that out if you can't do it. So you know what he's capable of and what he's going to go back to in the gym. Absolutely. Your Chanko double twist, real short on that landing, actually stepped right under the edge of that ball table. Did Kayla Booth and that was unfortunate, but good that he stayed on his feet. Transfer from UIC, he departed the Flames after they cut their program. We talked about that with William Mary being reinstated. Actually, Randy Jepson and he have a really good connection because that's how his head coach wound up at Penn State when Oregon dissolved their men's gymnastics program. High bar now for Penn State. This is Alex Frack, senior out of Nazareth. Home of the Andretti's, by the way. Good enough. Yeah. Fairly conservative routine, but man, it, this is one of those events, high bar, where there's so many different ways the judges can duck. Sometimes you just you want to play it safe. Skills like that, the stoop to handstand that needs to finish right in a vertical position. Double back at the end. Small hop. Nice job, Alex Frack. More Penn State. We talked about Ethan Dick, the New Zealander. He is now on pommel horse. He is competing every event all around today. He's in 13th place coming into this rotation. So moved up, I think, slightly after floor exercise. But he's going to get the two lowest scoring events out of the way. High bar and pommel horse. And Oh, and that is unfortunate. I was about to say, if he can just stay on and hit here, he's got some higher scoring events that he could move up and, and start to fight for that All-American status, and that's going to put him in a big hole. Pommel horse has been difficult all around, though. That's This is not a unique situation to me. Oh, pommel horse is, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to take a chainsaw, cut it up into small <laughs> pieces, and start a campfire with that thing. It is just, the pommel horse is going to win. Eventually, you know, you might have your moments. You might stay on and hit a big routine. And it, it, it's like Mother Nature. At the end of the day, Mother Nature is in charge. Well, pommel horse is the Mother Nature of men's gymnastics. It just it owns you. And you just want to have those moments where you feel like you got a victory. But that was an unfortunate one. First time we'll get a look at the Air Force Academy. This is Frankie Valentin. He is competing all around. And I'm loving the uniforms. They win the coolest uniform award in my book. It's not the Top Gun logo, but they had like the Top Gun logo on their chests yesterday competing in the qualifiers. Hey, you go to the Air Force Academy, you earn it. You can put the <laughs> Top Gun logo on your chest. These military academies, I have so much respect for what they do, not just gymnastically, the, the rigors of going to to Army at West Point or to Naval Academy or Air Force. It is it is from morning till night an amazing challenge, and these are some just awesome individuals. This is their escape. Like, for everyone else, this is the hardest part of their day. Yeah. For these guys, this is the easy thing. <laughs> exactly. Nice double-double at the end there. On to the team scores here. You have talked about this needing to be a big rotation. The handstand starts early for Noah Duran. There's a required movement, usually in the dismount on Pommel Horse. Minnesota needs to be huge. They knew 
if they can hit five good routines here, it'll be the first time they've done it this season. It's just, it's a tough event, and they have struggled for a variety of reasons. Lost some of their depth. But this is really good so far. Nice swing, keep it, keeping it steady. And there you go. That's, that's it in a nutshell, man. That is Pommel Horse. He looked great, honestly. Two circles before that, I would have said, he, he looks fantastic. Now he's not gonna get the value of that skill he fell on. Hop over to Bennett Kwong here, vaulting all around as an individual. Nice Uchenko double full. Hawkeye contingency here, cheering him on. A couple of Hawkeyes, Ethan Davis, also in the competition. We saw Amari Sewell vaulting earlier. That did make it through for J.D. Reeve, their head coach there. Next up on the University of Michigan now vaulting. So this becomes a big rotation. You catch that on the wide shot. Michigan needs to be a mover and a shaker here after struggling on horse in their first rotation. They absolutely, they absolutely do. They're 5.7 behind Stanford coming into this rotation. That needs to be very close to erased because they will have had vault behind them. So it needs to be much, much tighter. Michigan's still gonna have a chance. Alan Camillus is ranked 14th on rings. His season high is a 13.75. This is Oklahoma. This is their leadoff guy. Oklahoma sitting in third place after two rotations behind Minnesota. But Minnesota's gonna drop. They're in second place. They're on Pommel Horse, which is a low scoring event, especially for them. And they've already got a miss. So they are certainly gonna drop out of that second position, opening the door for Oklahoma and maybe even Michigan to take a huge jump. Nebraska, let's not forget about them as well. I think he likes it. Nicely done. We saw something similar from Michigan on their ring rotation. Start off strong, it stuck some landings, but you gotta keep it going. This is the first time we've showed you this young man today. This is Riley Luce, who finished second to Cameron Bach at the Winter Cup. Turned some heads. Tom Glamey told me that Riley Luce is really tight is typical of Tom Delaney. No, this is a good kid. He, he loves him, work, works hard. Of course, that Winter Cup finish put him on the senior national team. At least throws his name in the mix when it comes to Olympians heading to Tokyo. A lot still for him to do. So I'm not ignoring the other teams, but just looking at Michigan and Oklahoma in this, or Michigan and Stanford in this rotation. I mentioned it before. Stanford on the low, one of the lowest scoring events in gymnastics. Michigan on the highest scoring. It'll be really interesting to see if they can make up five points. That's possible in this rotation, Michigan could. Jake Moore's a great legs gymnast. Nice double twisting. Sukahar in the laid out position. Gets the green flag. Only a 14-8 start value. We typically see the best vaults typically starting at a 15-2. But that was clean. Spencer Goodell for Oklahoma will hop up on the rings next. Top 10 gymnast on this apparatus. He is ninth in the country. Put up a 14-03 yesterday. Oklahoma as a team on rings, sorry John, is second. He looks, I mean, look at his face. <laughs> he looks like he's waiting to go into like the doctor's office or something. He's like, oh gosh. It, it looks like he's holding, like he's he has a false grip with nothing in his hands. Yeah, probably because those biceps are so stinking big. I mean, that look on his face. Looks like he's seeing somebody across the way that he just doesn't like. If I'm the rings looking back at him right now, I think I'm shaking a little bit, wondering what this guy is about to do to me. He has his angry eyes. He does, I love it, his focus. And I tell you what, I hate this as a gymnast. It's always one of those things right. that you, you gotta stay calm, you're waiting for the judges, and you got that mental rehearsal you do leading up to your routine, and they interrupt it, and it, it can be challenging. 14.03 by Alan Camillus. That's actually the best score on rings for anybody so far tonight. It ties James Reed and Cameron Bach from Michigan, but that's in the leadoff spot that for is, Oklahoma. That is big. 
Oklahoma is 4.422 behind Stanford coming into this rotation. So, you know, again, Stanford on high bar, Michigan and Oklahoma can make a move. Minnesota's not gonna make a move. Illinois, I, you know, it's hard for me to see them making that jump as well. So that's why we're kind of looking at those two teams right now. Obviously a lot of gymnastics to go. Goodell is one of two all-arounders competing for Oklahoma. He's got a 15.1 start value. Camillus right before him at a 15-2 and put up that 14. That's actually really good. He can stick that up. A little hop and also a little pipe in the air. That dismount's supposed to be perfectly straight. But other than that, great job two for two for the Sooners. Casey Cummings on vault. He is 40th in the country here. See a double twist. He put a 14-3-3, two hundredths off his career high yesterday. Chanko double full, little crooked coming onto the table there. That's why he's over that line. You can see it coming. It's another tenth in deductions, but other than that, nicely done. High bar now, but this is Brandon Wynn. The freshman competed all around many times for Stanford this year, was really thrown into the fire. Tom Galimi went up to him and said, hey, son, you're doing all around. He went, great, happy to, because Stanford was a interesting training story guys literally all over the country in sacramento in texas because santa clara county had some of the strictest covid restrictions in the nation yeah they Tom believe he drew up 39 training programs this year they did not train together as a team until march march I mean, 13th that is unheard of a month ago this routine so far has been pretty darn good Small hop there at the end. They've got three big ones yet to go, including Brody Malone, who's got a 16.5 start value. They got a 15.3 start value yet coming up, as well as a 15.0 start value. So they've got some big guns yet to go, but got a hit in Oklahoma, Michigan. They're coming. back to Minnesota. Talk about the all-around competition. Shane Wiskus is your leader through two rotations. He'll pop up on Pommel Horse here, where he put up a season best yesterday, 14-3-6-6. But again, we've told you that this is just the fourth time Shane Wiskus is competing this season. One regular season meet, the Big Ten Championships, last night in qualifications, and today, because he was at the Olympic Training Center much of the season. And this is a big moment for Minnesota as a team. They have not put up big scores here. And for Shane Wiskus, this might be the last big hurdle if he wants to go on and win an NCAA all-around championship. Little break there, the knees bending. has got to keep the speed going, that's critical. Oh, the savvy vet. Not a great routine. I would not call that a great horse routine, but I call it pretty darn good. We got a 13, 5, 6, 6, day one. I think that's going to be pretty darn close to that. Maybe a little bit lower, but Minnesota's a team. They had a 13 yesterday by this point in their pommel horse rotation. They got one more guy yet to go. They need a score in the 13s. You know, what is the goal for Minnesota? I don't really know, honestly. I have a question for you on Whiskey. So let's take a look at Paul Judah, though, first on the ball. Got a two and a half twist. Oh, nicely done, Paul Judah. Small hop backwards, really clean in the air. A lot of guys put their feet coming on, but that was pretty nice. What does it say to you that Shane Wiskus wins the Nissan Emery this year, the best senior gymnast, the Heisman Trophy of men's gymnastics? He only competed four times. His reputation is huge. It is, and I think it's a it's it's a career it's a career award, and uh, he certainly has earned that. And it goes to obviously a senior gymnast and. And I think he's very worthy. Here's Morgan Seiler now, a junior gymnast from Flower Mound, Texas, on the still rings. Look at this. Oh, 
Oklahoma looking good. So they started with a 14, 13, nine from Spencer Goodell. That was a very good routine as well. Two left to go. Jake Benet now, last to go here on floor. That is a 13, nine for Morgan Seiler for Oklahoma as well. Nebraska's floor rotation started out with a 14-2-6-6, then a 14-2-3-3, and then a couple of scores in the high 13s. They are certainly capable of scoring 14s here. They need one. But this floor rotation, again, they are going to close the gap on the leader as well. You can see they're looking at almost eight points they got to make up. On the Cardinal. Nebraska was third here in their last appearance in 2019, the last championships. Nice stick. Jake Benet was a big part of the rebuild for Chuck Jamelka to get the program back to that status. That finish in 19 was the best since 1999 for Nebraska. The recruiting was a long process, sometimes painful, Chuck Jamelka told us. But the senior class, led by Benet, and that energy was the big reason why. Nice triple twist there at the end. A couple little hops at the end there, but good finish. Scored a 14-3-3 in prelims. It should be right around there again. Stanford on the high bar. This is Brody Malone, the defending all-around champion. This is big gymnastics. The highest start value, I believe, in the entire competition, a 16-5. one called the Lynch where he caught mixed grip. A former Stanford gymnast and Olympian Jair Lynch invented that one. If Brody makes an Olympic team this summer, this event is going to be maybe the biggest reason why. An event in the U.S. is a little bit weak on, but he is not. Look at this gymnastics. Sick. Double-double. Hop at the end. Just another day at the office. Brody Malone is the defending high bar champion. Is that number gonna be enough to do it again? 14.03 for Whiskus is the one to beat. Here now is Bach. This is his weakest event. Oh man, not Cameron Bach's night. That is unfortunate. We saw a mistake on the horse, and now that one. You know, Cameron had a pretty serious ankle injury a number of years ago on vault. Yeah. And it's been a long, long road, slow grind back, and I tip my hat to that kid. He just he grinded it out, and he is one of the best in the country now, but that was a that was an unfortunate moment. That Brody Malone routine put up a 14-3-6-6. That is your clubhouse leader. This is Hamish Carter now, out of West Midlands in the UK. Missed the Big Tens because of injury, and his return tonight is huge for Illinois. And this is, this kid back in the lineup is, probably means more to the Illini lineup than any single person means to anybody. They have had so many injuries. Had a nerve injury in his neck that's been just bothersome, and they were very cautious with it. And they are loving having him back, especially in parallel bars and high bar. Their next event. Justin Spring called it akin to a stinger in football, but think about gymnastics. You can't really look over your shoulder. It's tough. And Hamish Carter. Oh. Unfortunate dump that double pike. You could kind of see it right off of the bars. Did not ride up enough, get those hips over his head. But I tell you what, it's so tough to be out in this sport and to come back and to hit gymnastics in a short amount of time is just, it's really, it's almost impossible. And he's one of those kind of analysis, paralysis by analysis type guys. He's very headsy, and it's one of the reasons he's great. But it's hard, like you said, to jump back in. Here now is David Pachinka in the anchor spot for Minnesota. They need one here. They need that. Oh, man, I love his swing, though. Kind of got those skinny long legs that look great on Palm Horse. And wow, did they need a hit right there. That was big. Shane Whisk is a 13-4. Just on a side note, Br Brody Malone beats Shane in this rotation by almost a point, he will have the lead in the all-around. By one-tenth of a point. Brody Malone has overtaken Shane Wiskus for the all-around. We'll update you on the team scoring when we come on back for rotation four in a moment. Monday night. 
football. It's your first chance to see how the Fighting Illini look under new head coach Brett Bielema. Live coverage of Illinois spring football. It kicks off Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Men's Gymnastics National Championships here from Minneapolis. Six teams qualifying, Illinois among them. Take a look at the all-around story. Brody Malone, though, the defending champion, and he is defending. He is now one-tenth, three-hundredths, and three-thousandths of a point above Shane Wiskus. That is how it ended in 2019. Brody Malone, Shane Wiskus on his heels. And Paul Judah, he's not out of it either. You know, .633, it, it feels like a lot, especially when the two guys in front of you are Brody and Shane, but it's gonna be interesting. So let's just handicap it the rest of the way. Brody goes floor, pommel horse rings. He's got pommel horse in the middle there. Shane's already got high bar and pommel horse done, lower scoring events. So, you know, I, and, and Shane also has vault. Um, so I maybe give a little bit of an edge to Shane as far as potential score versus Brody's potential score, but a lot of people die with potential, Joel, I'm told. So, you know, you gotta go out and perform and it doesn't matter what events you have left, he's gotta hit. Cameron Bach was the champion at the Winter Cup. He has fallen off the mark. A couple of struggles for Cameron Bach. That leads to the team story with Michigan in third place. Stanford, big jump, is now four, yeah, exactly, no, that's three. Five plus eight is eight minus five. You got this. Yeah. Uh, Three-point lead. Listen, I don't do math well. Uh, Three-point lead, exactly, for Stanford. And then Michigan nipping at the heels for the podium. Nebraska trying to find a way on for third place as well. Yeah, so you know what? You, you, you want to hand... I can't do math. Hey, right? I, I can't either. I, I flunked out of high school algebra. Um, but you got to look at it this way. So Stanford and Michigan have already vaulted. And that is the event where you can make up the most ground. Oklahoma is on vault now. So they are three points behind Stanford. As it sits right now, they go to vault. But Stanford, you know, they go to the floor exercise where they can put up big numbers. So let's compare their season high scores for a moment on these two respective events. Stanford's season high score is a 69.8. Oklahoma's season high score on vault is a 73.2. So, you know, you don't, often get season highs in the championship. But they, they actually went, they went 77-9-7 yesterday to best that for Stanford. But it is their weakest event on floor. Yeah, so, well, you know, you look at, yeah, and that, and that means a lot what they did yesterday as well. But, uh, you know, you gotta give the advantage to, they went a 70, yeah, 70.797. 70 so that is their highest, you know, you, you gotta look at having about three points, two and a half point advantage to Oklahoma in this rotation, they're down by three. We could have virtual tie after this one between those two teams. You know, what's funny, uh, they actually did tie when they met each other in a dual meet this season. How about that, right? How hard is that with the scores, as many combinations of scores as you can have to have a tie, it's almost impossible. Now in a championship setting where there's more judges, like if we ended in a tie tonight, it's a mathematical impossibility. <laughs> it's got to be. It would be the, the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But, I mean, the decimals are even through three rotations. Yeah, that's pretty So that's pretty the hard unusual. part. Iowa competing as uh, individuals today. This is Jacob Friedman. Or excuse me, yeah, James Friedman. He's competed all around a couple of times this year. You talked about guys that earned their keep earlier tonight, John. He is a walk-on. That as a freshman, J.D. Reeves said, give him a sophomore to junior season, he may be one of the best all-arounders in America. Unfortunately, will not get that chance at Iowa, but see what the future holds for him. J.D. Reeves actually coached out at Stanford earlier in his coaching career. Now at Iowa, he's done a very good job there. They finished third as a team at the Big Ten Championships, and it's tough, man. You know, Nebraska and Iowa, they've had that slow build to, to be coming in the top three in the conference, and kind of get the rug pulled out from under them is an unfortunate when they're really building something special down there in Iowa City. Not bad. Ethan Dick will be on still rings as well as an individual. 
see him chalking up in the background. Let's go to high bar. This is Dominic Shuley from Ohio State. Second time we've seen an Ohio State gymnast tonight. Nice Zoli Min right there, unique one arm skill. Really, ooh, cranking up those giants. He's supposed to do another Takacha, but balked on it. Did not let go of the bar. Seems to get it right there. Up next on floor, from the University of Iowa, Evan Davis. Got the dismount. Oh, man. And you know what? It's, I hope he is okay. That is a violent landing and I was almost going to comment on how he is just cranking those giants so much speed and torque and yes you got dowels little little leather rolls basically that are in those grips that hook over the bar but look at the torque right here the g forces are ridiculous and he that was a WWE body slam into the mat and that cannot feel good and you know what I've done that not with as much power and strength as he has had, but I've done something very similar. And I think the way he landed, certainly we're not gonna speculate on injuries, but definitely some torque on the back and the shoulders. Just put this in perspective for the non-gymnasts out there watching this, it's the high bar. You obviously have to hold on to it. That's the basic thing. But how difficult is that when you've got that much power and torque? Well, you know, it's not that difficult, but what happens sometimes is you gotta let your body stretch into this, this dismount and, and relax in a way, even though your, your body's tight, you let it stretch and open, and it's just a natural tendency in a way to let your hand, you gotta let your hand slide. So you can't squeeze the, the snot out of the bar, you gotta kinda let them open and, and slide around that bar, and with that much torque, unfortunately that happens. It does not happen often, and thankfully it looks like he's okay. This is Connor Van Lu for Navy on the vaults. Nice. That was beautiful. He was a regular season All-American last year. He was eighth in the country when COVID-19 cut the season short. There's Kip Simons, my 1996 Olympic teammate, head coach there at the Naval Academy. Was at the Air Force Academy as well, and an awesome dude, great coach. Back to Bennett Wong on the parallel bars. Nice front one and a quarter. That is tough on the body, slamming into those rails. Bennett was 18th nationally on this apparatus this season. Bennett right in there, working on being an All-American in the all-around and certainly putting himself in position for events in. Now we get into the teamwork here for Nebraska. This is Charlie Giles, Cooper Giles, his brother is also on the team. Both of them come from Premier Gymnastics. Paul Hom is their coach. And that is where their circle strength comes from. It is just a beautiful baseline of fundamentals. Nebraska needs to be perfect the rest of the way. And you never go out in gymnastics and try to be perfect. It's, it's almost, almost oxymoronic. You try to be perfect and you're just not. But really, at the end of the day, they need to be. They finish on vault, a high scoring event. They're good on pommel horse. They got to hit every routine and get a little bit of help from the leaders right now. Beautiful stretch, nice toe point. There's one, and that was about as good as a young man can do it. How natural are the Giles brothers here? They can swing, man, they're smooth. Go to the rings and see Henry Meeker out of Minnesota. You will immediately notice that titanium brace on Meeker's right knee. He is competing with a torn ACL that he actually suffered on this apparatus, a dismount on the rings. He has changed the dismount just to a front layout full twist here to alleviate some of the pain, but he will have surgery on Wednesday. 
to fix that ACL. His dad, Brian, was a gymnast that I grew up admiring. He was a gymnast here at the University of Minnesota, early 80s, and was one of the alternates to the 84 Olympic team as well, and just really an awesome gymnast. And as a young kid growing up, one of those guys I wanted to be like. Henry makes it pretty clear, though, he's trying so hard to get out of his dad's shadow. Sorry to bring it up, Henry. That was a nice ring routine. Just a small hop. Slap that ACL. He has to get ACL surgery after the season is over. Was going to take six weeks and tour the world. But unfortunately, ACL repair has interrupted that before he starts a career in civil engineering. He's going to spend six weeks in bed as if nobody's done that enough already over the last year. Here's Oklahoma on vaults. Camaras here. Oh, it's a moving day for Oklahoma. They get the vault, and this is their chance to move. They are in second place, three points behind the Stanford Cardinal, who are on floor exercise. They started their floor exercise rotation with a 14-2 from their leadoff. That's a big start. And it's interesting because they were on the same apparatus as flipped earlier tonight. And Oklahoma did a great job to catch up to Stanford while they were vaulting. The brothers Tyndall here competing on pommel horse. This is Mitchell of the Saskatoon Tyndalls. Of course, Jesse is competing all around for Ohio State tonight. Wyatt performed at Penn State. 13, 5, 6, 6, a good start score for Nebraska. This is Mitch's only apparatus tonight. They go leech fishing, by the way, up north with their grandparents. I heard about that. That's, that's, a, that's a subject for a whole nother show, I think. That's just their outdoorsman. Beautiful. I love his toe point. Nice stretch. The problem is Nebraska's got to catch up, and you can't catch up on a horse, even if you are perfect. But nonetheless, that was awesome. That was awesome. That's what it should look like on the handstand. You know, Nebraska had the same rotation order at the Big Ten Championships, and they had a terrible floor performance. And Chuck Schmelka said, guys, just take a deep breath, regroup, and let's hit. They hit their next 15 in a row, and on the vault, they moved all the way up to second. Mason Menzer will walk on, now sixth in the country. Another great one. They are trying to get the lead, and they really need to. They end the meet on high bar. Low scoring event, we've talked about it ad nauseum. So they need to get the lead at this rotation. They've got good parallel bars, and then got to hope they can literally and figuratively hang on on high bar at the end. This is the vaccinated Evan Manavong here on high bar. A little close on that Takachev, and that's a problem. When you're close to the bar, when you catch, you don't have that momentum to get over the top, and that's a major break. The Illini, right now as it looks, Illini and Minnesota kind of battling it out for that fifth spot. Minnesota had about a one-tenth lead over the Illini coming into this rotation. Minnesota on rings, Illini on high bar. I give the advantage to Minnesota. Both of those teams outside looking in for qualification yesterday. Illinois came in eighth ranked in the country, Minnesota 10th ranked in the country, top six teams, three from each session. So good work for both of them just to get here as we get a look at Riley Luce now on floor from Stanford. That's why they play the game, right, Joel? Yep. So far, early in this rotation, obviously Stanford looks very good and Riley Luce, sticky feet. start value. This is where, again, where Stanford flexes their start value muscle. He's going to do a Maltese on floor coming up here in a second. The strength from Riley Moose on exhibit right here. That is so cool. If you're in your living room at home, go ahead and lay on the ground <laughs> and just keep your arms straight, try to lift you. Don't get hurt. Don't, put, don't put hurt yourself. Put something under your face. Yeah, you, you won't even get your face off the ground. I mean, that is it's ridiculous. They should have a Riley Loose coffee table. Just have a, a, a replica of him doing that. That is so awesome. Now available on John Roethlisberger's Etsy. That is a fantastic routine, man. Triple twist dismount. 
Stanford again trying to give, keep pace with Oklahoma on vault, and Oklahoma's vaults have been outstanding. The battle of the heavyweight. This is Virgil Watkins on parallel bars. He went 13-7-6, a season high yesterday. Michigan, like Oklahoma, they've got to start closing the gap. The problem for Oklahoma and Michigan is they both have to do high bar still. And that is gonna be a tough one to overcome and catch up to the Stanford Cardinal. Keep in mind, Stanford does that pommel horse, and that was awesome. Holy double front, raise the flag. Not going away, though, not going away. It's the highest score of the event on parallel bars tonight. 14.066 on parallel bars from Michigan. And now Crew Bold, who will be a member of the Wolverines next season. Competing for Minnesota tonight for the final time. And this is not a strong event for Minnesota, like the Pommel Horse. Low ranked in the country, but they just gotta be clean. They get to go to vault, which is a great scoring event, and they finish with parallel bars, which is a good event for them as well. So, you know, trying to hold off the Illini, trying to maybe give themselves a shot to catch the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Just the fact that Minnesota is here is remarkable. There you go, Krubold. Gonna have a different M on his jersey next season. Glad he gets to continue his collegiate career, but right now I'm glad to see that routine nicely done, stuck dismount. Mike Burns called last night for Minnesota, just qualifying to get here. One of the top moments of his sporting career that he's witnessed in person. Certainly under the adversity and the heartbreak this season, that is absolutely gonna be a highlight. I think it's a highlight for the athletes on that team as well. Kevin Criley competed in the NCAA Finals in 2019 on Pommel Horse. He's 13th in the country this year, a 14-1 season high. done. Khalil Jackson right before them at 12.3, which clearly had some breaks, but Charlie Giles, Mitch Tindall, Evan Criley, great performances. They got one more to go for their team score. 13-8 is the best pommel horse score we've seen tonight. That Paul Judah just flare fest. Speaking of Paul Judah, here he is on parallel bars where he ranks second in the country. break right there. Right when I said they needed a big one. Unfortunate. Oh, trouble on that Diamondoff. Did not swing it up over the top enough. Oh, hit his feet on that Bobzar. You're a Wolverine, and I don't think you should be allowed to do a skill that's named after a Buckeye, are you? <laughs> Bobzar. Raj Bobzar. Yep, Olympian 2008, Raj Bobzar invented that one. Paul Judah trying to be an Olympian this summer as well, but right now it's about the NCAA Championships. Finishes strong, had some breaks, man. He's a young kid, but he, had, he showed some poise and some savvy getting through that routine. A lot of guys, it would have been a disaster, not for Judah. Here's Josh Corona vaulting. 20th in the country here. Not bad, two and a half twist. Oklahoma knows they have got to make a move. Let's take a look at Cooper Giles now on pommel horse. Came around on that, that's called a zone, actually invented by a Penn State gym, this Mark zone. And he does a full 360 on one hand, ridiculously difficult. 
and just came off balance. Looks like he hit his leg kind of hard on the pommel as he came off. Man, it's so tough falling early on pommel horse routine. I've done it. To take a brief, deep breath and basically realize you got to do your whole routine, but you're starting from a one-point deficit. Oh, and that's too bad. I mean, he has got the type of routine that is a national championship routine. Oh, and just, that is just beautiful gymnastics. You got to appreciate that, and you just got to feel for the Cornhuskers and him. That could have been a big one. Shane Wiskus now competing all around. He is currently in second place, hops up on the still rings. In the battle for all around, so 14 6 6 6 from Brody Malone. I don't think Shane Wiskus is going to score that high on this event. He put up a 14 3 6 6 in prelim, so he's not going to gain ground. He just wants to try to keep it close. He's got Bolt and Paralabars for his last two events, and he is capable of huge numbers on those two. He sealed the deal on parallel bars, getting Minnesota here last night. That was a big moment, certainly. He's got a double twist and double back. He's really good at sticking this. No time like the present. <laughs> and on cue. He's got two more to go. Brody Malone, Shane Wiskus exchanging shots. Could we be seeing Olympians as well. Now this was moments ago for Gage Dyer. If you have something in your hands, put it down and sit down. This is a 15-0-3-3. Gage Dyer is your clubhouse leader after what you're about to witness. This is a triple twist. The hardest vault being done. And there you go. Sorry I used up my toothpick already, Gage Dyer. That was awesome. Man, trying to chase down the Stanford Cardinal on floor. Somewhere Sam McCulloch went, um, nah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I've seen Sam do that ball. It was Cameron Bach, an all-arounder. You know, Cameron only did three events in the uh, qualifications. Michigan did not need to put all their best routines out there. Doing all around, obviously, here tonight, and it's just been a little bit off. Just one of those nights for Cameron Bach. Nice there, though. Take a look at the Bob Czar. That is an E skill. A lot of gymnasts doing the Bob Czar. There you go, Cameron Bach. Sticks the landing. Back to the pommel horse. This is Nebraska's stud freshman, Taylor Christopoulos, the best freshman in the country this year. You gotta be happy if you're a coach and you get the freshman of the year. Oh, and just things are not going well for Nebraska in this rotation. Now, Taylor does not count towards their team score. He is working on an all-around total. That's the good news for the Nebraska team. Bad news for Taylor, and hurt his all-around chances to become an All-American. Such a big piece for Nebraska. Chuck Jamelka, their head coach, told us when they told the team that Taylor Christopoulos committed, the team celebrated. They understood what getting the Utah freshman meant in Lincoln. Yeah, absolutely. Nebraska's got a beautiful new training facility there. Certainly going to be attractive to young gymnasts coming in to, to take looks at the Cornhuskers. And I think it might not be the night for Nebraska to, to win their first national team title in some time, but they're going to be back in the fight again, I guarantee it. That wraps us up for our fourth rotation. We'll update you on what the standings look like when we come back. Stanford and Oklahoma duking it out again. Tomorrow, don't miss a huge men's lacrosse showdown when top-ranked Maryland hosts 12th-ranked Ohio State. Coverage starts tomorrow night at 5 o'clock Eastern. You can catch it on Big Ten Network. 
and the Fox Sports app. We are barreling towards May mayhem for collegiate lacrosse. We have all come to this for collegiate men's gymnastics. Brody Malone, his lead has grown over Shane Wiskus for about five tenths difference. Brandon Brionis from Stanford and Paul Judah are just behind. And that was to be expected, I think, in that rotation. Brody was on floor exercise, Shane on rings, where typically you're gonna see higher scores on floor, but here's the difference is Shane goes to vault, and then he goes to parallel bars, two very high scoring events for him if he can hit. And on the other side of the floor, Brody goes to horse yeah. and rings, which aren't as high as scoring. So this is gonna really come right down to the last moment. And Wiskus has laid down the gauntlet on rings where Malone still has to go because rotation, Wiskus lost points, but he has the best ring score of anybody. Yeah, and you know, you got a horse too, or you know, it's tough to get a 14, period, if you're, I mean, perfect. And uh, Wiskus will be on vault this rotation where he scored a very high 14 in day one actually scored a 14-7-6-6. So that's gonna be an interesting one, but looking at the team score, this is this is where the drama is kind of unfolding right now. Stanford and OU, it seems to be between the two of them. It's a one point separating those two teams. Michigan is over five and a half points behind Stanford right now. That is gonna be a tough one for them to overcome. They are on high bar next, not gonna close ground there. They finish on floor, which they could close some ground, but it's just a big hill to climb. You look at you look at Oklahoma, they're on parallel bars now. They can put up some nice numbers on parallel bars. Stanford is on pommel horse. So this is an event where Oklahoma, they absolutely, they need to have a lead on Stanford after this one if they want to hold them off in that last rotation because Oklahoma on, on high bar, Stanford on rings in the last rotation. That's advantage Stanford for sure. Oklahoma ended on high bar in 2019 and could not fend off Stanford. If you remember the last championship we had two years ago, Yule Moldauer fell on high bar. That opened the door. Stanford was able to come back and erase a four point deficit in that final rotation for what was the closest victory in any gymnastics championship in more than a decade that .664 victory for Stanford over Oklahoma in 2019. So a little bit of drama within the drama of this meet is, is the battle for fourth place now. Oh, Illinois, is, is, they've struggled. They're, they're four points behind Minnesota for the fifth spot. Minnesota is very close to Nebraska, about a half a point behind Nebraska for the fourth spot. Minnesota is on vault now. I suspect Minnesota will leapfrog the Cornhuskers for that third spot, or that fourth spot rather, in this rotation. But then Nebraska gets to go to vault on the final rotation while Minnesota's on parallel bars. That's probably advantage Nebraska, but again, that battle is gonna be close as well. Nick Mock for Penn State will hop over to Pommel Horse here. He is a specialist competing as an individual. Penn State on Pommel Horse is always fun. Of course, we talked about it earlier. Steven Nedarosik, the former Nissan Emery winner, still trains with Penn State. But you talked to Randy Jepson about his Pommel Horse unit, and he says, you go over there during practice, you are just as likely to hear about formulas and equations as you are to hear about gymnastics. They are an interesting bunch of engineering majors, the vast majority of them. Yeah, it's uh, it's an impressive. <laughs> An impressive team, top to bottom. Nick Mock himself is actually an aerospace engineering major. And Dr. Jose Palacios is an engineering professor at Penn State, is a former Penn State gymnast. Look at this swing. Oh, now that's such a tough skill. Stepped over both pommels while doing a spindle. Uh-oh, uh-oh, rhythm off a little bit. Handles it. These routines are just a marathon. How difficult is it when that rhythm slowed and he lost his speed? Oh, you can see the leg shaking. Oh, the old leg shake on the handstand. I've been there way too many times. You're fighting so hard to get to the handstand and the leg is just vibrating. Oh, lost a little gas. And to your point, you lose rhythm like that, it is. it makes the routine like you just did two of them. Because you're fighting to get on there, you're fighting to stay on, and then you gotta continue to go and make it look easy. And, and you can see the handstand at the end. There's Steven Netarasic giving him a hug, congratulations. 
Head over to the high bar. And take a look at Noah Neufeld from Cal. He is the rookie of the year nationally. 27th in the country on this apparatus. He's from Woga, his club gym down in Texas. Of course, the same gym that produced Madison Koshin, Carly Patterson, Noski and Lucan. Pretty good gym. Not bad. The owner of Woga, Valerian Lucan, one of my idols growing up. He he could do it all. Struggle a little early in this routine, that release and that kip up not happening the way he wanted it to. A little shy on that full twist and double layout. Cal's got a great program. Great program too. They they were scheduled to be cut years ago, and they fought to keep the program there on a limited funding budget. But man, they still can produce some great athletes. Hats off to them. Another Cal Bear. Here's Caleb Rickwood. Oh, on cue. Talking about the great athletes. Two and a half twists. You can see the Minnesota team over there showing some love to the Cal Bear. That's one of the cool things, is the individuals competing, getting the height from the other teams around them tonight. Absolutely. The Gopher should have slipped a maroon and gold jersey on that guy before he went down that runway. <laughs> Back to Pommel Horse. Individually here, competing for Iowa. This is Evan Davis. He is competing in the all-around tonight. He and Bennett Wall competing in the all-around. He's 28th nationally on this apparatus, the pommel horse. Davis comes in right now fifth in the all-around race, right behind the names on the graphic we showed you earlier. So he is in uh, All-America territory, but he could still medal depending how he closes. He's got to close here. Almost loses it on the end of the pommel horse. But he stays on. Fantastic fight. He's loving it. He can taste it. Oh, that would be an awesome way to go out if you're Evan Davis, the junior from Houston, Texas, at Iowa. This is Sean Jr. Nybarger, the captain from Ohio State. That was a big flying Bob Zar from one end to the other. Big amplitude above the bars. If you have a strong grip, you have strong hands and can hang on to the bars on parallel bars, you have such an advantage. And you, you do those underbar skills, they're worth a lot of points. It's always a weakness for me. I cannot hang on to the dark bars. Holy cow, he snuck that double pike around. It looks like he was dumped it off the rails a little bit, but made it around, no problem. Back to Iowa, Bennett Plum. He is a true all-around. He's 18th on high bar. You look at his rankings across floor is Bennett's best apparatus. He is seventh nationally there. But his rankings are 15th, 18th, 19th. He is very good at all of these things. And when you combine that together, it makes him an elite all-around gymnast. Steady. A little flat on that, that jam. Dislocates his shoulders, needs to go right up to the handstand. Like that. That's a sweet pull twisting double loud. Almost looked like he surprised himself right there. You can see JD Reeve right in the middle of the screen, reenacting that stuck landing. Yeah, hang on for dear life. That was an interesting sequence to start the pommel horse routine for Ian Gunther. Two scissor the handstands right in a row. Doesn't get much better than Ian. He's fifth in the country here on pommel horse. First guy up in your pommel horse rotation is fifth in the country. 
That's a pretty sweet spot to be in. He's got a 15-5 start value, which is also a very good start value on Pommel. Talk to Tom Delaney about the construction and a good routine to start things off by Gunther. And he said, hey, you, you want to build your lineups that your best is typically at the end, but he also considers other events and apparatuses. Who needs more rest based on what came before and what comes after? And that is why Gunther, as the fifth best pommel horse man in the country, is the leadoff man. Yep. Here's Ethan Dick all around for himself out of Penn State. Nice double twist. You see a lot of the same vault being done across the board. The double twist, the two and a half twist. Gage Dyer did the triple, which is a rarity, but it's kind of just the way vault has evolved. The two and a half twist is the safest high start value you can get, and you see a lot of guys do it. Dick is now fifth in the all-around competition as Anthony Tolfik, the senior competing in his only apparatus tonight, leads off on high ball. So Michigan needs a miracle here. Five and a half points behind the leader. Trying to replicate what the women did from Michigan earlier today in winning the national title, but they've got to put together something incredibly special and get help from Oklahoma and Stanford. This would be the spot, top team in the country on the horizontal ball. The problem with that is even as the top team in the country, you're not gonna score high on this event, their high this season is a 68.25. Just the dismount here for Tofik. Oh, that was nice routine, though. Michigan's still in it. Oh, it ain't over until it's over. Every routine, every routine counts. Stanford's on pommel horse, and as good as they are, things can go sideways quickly. And as we mentioned, Oklahoma still has to go to the high bar, so Michigan has got to just hit. They've got nine routines left. You got to hit them all and let the chips fall where they may. Stanford right now is your leader as scores continue to trickle in here in this fifth of six rotations. This is Riley Luce on Pommel Horse. 13-6-3-3 for the leadoff. Not bad. Great for some teams. Riley's got a high start value also, a 15-7, so actually two-tenths higher than Gunther. And 13-8 is the best score today. Oh, that's nice. So Stanford is in a good spot here because Luce is probably going to best Gunther, and he had the fourth best score on Pommel Horse coming in. I mean, that's just brutal. The highest score of the day at 13-8. That just gives you an idea of how big that 13-6-3-3 from Ian Gunther was. Only Paul Judah from Michigan. Nebraska's Evan Crowley and Mitch Tindall, uh, Tindall have been better. Nice two and a half twist. I'm not sure if his foot went over that line. The right side of his foot was right on the line. You can be on it, you just can't be over it. You saw that. First score of a 13.466, that's not good. First score for Minnesota. They need big ones if they want to catch Nebraska. Mitch Tindall now on still rings. Saw him on horse earlier. Those are his two events. swing in that sequence. Big step on that landing. Mitch starts from a 14-6 on that. It was a good routine. Unfortunately, that dismount has, has a number of places where the judges can take deductions. Piking in the air, huge hop forward, as well as the shoulders low. We'll see what they do. Brody Malone on the all-around. 57-4-3-2. As the scores trickle in, he is 10 points out of first place. So, barring disaster, he will be your all-around leader after this routine. And I tell you what, 13-1-6-6 for Riley Luce with a 15-7 start value. Brody Malone's got a 15-8 start value, so it's higher, but my goodness. 
A 14 seems like an Im complete impossibility on Tom Horse, which probably means if Shane Wiskus lands his vault on his feet, he'll get the lead going into the last event. Malone is sixth in the country here on Palma Horse. And I tell you what, the thing is about Brody right now, the last thing he's worried about is an all-around title. Right. Stanford is on the cusp of back-to-back -back NCAA championships, and that's all that matters to this young man right now. You know, he doesn't have the most, oh, and what a fight right there. He does not have the most stretched swing. Just a little, a little pike in the hips, but he just keeps going and going and going. And there you go, Brody Malone with one event to go. That was a great effort. And there were some parts where he had to fight through that. Thomas Paul on the high bar for Michigan. He ranks 11th nationally following Tofik's 13-5-3-3. Good score. It's one of the best, actually. Tolfik's tied for fifth right now. Nice half talk. Very close to the handstand. A lot of air time on those releases. Flares out the full twist and double layout. Gives away a few steps on that landing, though. But Michigan, they're not going away. They're not giving up. Trying to give themselves a chance. Well, they're typically not a team that beats themselves. They don't make many mistakes. They won their dual meets by an average of 13 points this year, and then the Big Ten by 13 points. Tough opening tonight on the pommel horse, but trying to fight their way back in. Will Oklahoma or Stanford budge? This is Spencer Goodell. And, and Oklahoma is not gaining ground on Stanford. Maybe a 10. But with that mistake right there, this is again, Oklahoma has got to get the lead after this rotation. And right now, they're just not doing it. Oklahoma ends on high bar. That is the lowest scoring event. Good fight throughout, but he gave away a big air midway through that routine. Back to Michigan, Adam Wooten here moments ago on high bar. Back to back 13-5-3-3s, again, great scores. Beautiful laid out to Kachev. Adam starts for 15-2 on this event. That's in combination there. Second one's the Lynch. Here we go. Looks like three in a row for the Wolverines. Can he stick the dismount? Oh, that was beautiful. Raise that. the green flag. He stuck that dismount when he let go of the bar. That full twisting double layout was exactly textbook. Good height, not too far from the bar. Easy one to stick for him. Dylan Young now on the rings for Nebraska. I mean, this could still be a night for Michigan. If they can wind up on the podium, they won, obviously, in 2014 with Sam McCulloch, have not been on the podium since then. This would be a big night for Kirk Goldberg. It would, but he wouldn't look at it that It'd way. It'd be bittersweet, I right. can promise you that. He is, they came in with one goal, and that's to be the champs. It would hurt tonight in 10 years. You'd be happy with it. Happier. I don't know. I look back on my career. All I remember is the, the losses. <laughs> I bet you Kurt, as competitive as he is, he's the same way, man. You think about the, the ones that got away. Dismount for Young. Nicely done. Right now, they are fighting to keep that fourth spot, maybe. They are four points behind Michigan for that third spot, but that's not an impossibility. Minnesota needs to go big. They need some big numbers. Oh, and that is one. Man, the, the energy from the Gophers. 
they do not want this season to end, and they want to squeeze every tenth, and they are. Ben's an All-American. He shows why as we go to Paul Judah now, the nation's leader on high bar. Had the highest score in his session in the qualifications. Ooh, a little close to that bar. You can see that's why he had to bend his elbows to make that giant. I want you to keep in mind, he's coming down from about 15 feet, and that steel bar is inches away from his face. And it doesn't give the way it looks on television. That's solid. Yeah, I've, uh, my, my sternum had a up close and personal with the high bar when I was a kid. Oh, no! That, that's something that never happens for Paul Judah. That was a very unusual error. Man, he, you know, that's a shock to him as much as it is to anyone else. He is almost a guaranteed, not almost, he is a guaranteed hit on high bar. Third at the U.S. Championships before. And that's unfortunate. He's got 30 seconds to remount the bar, and he's using all of that 30 seconds. You get hit the way he did. Yeah, you know, it's insult to injury there coming off the bar, but regroups. And if Michigan had any slim hopes, of a miracle here and might have just slipped away with that unfortunate mistake. Man, he's a great kid and a great gymnast. And if the Olympics aren't in his future this year, you watch out. I would be shocked if we didn't see him on the world team or Olympic team someday. Mike Moran now back on vault for Minnesota prior to Whiskus. Trying to make a run. Oh, I think he made it. Don't forget to salute the judge there, buddy. That was a nice ball. A little bit of form in the air. Not perfectly stretched. You know what's interesting about this? I'll be curious. We got one ball through yet to go. You see your teammates stick a landing like that. It gets in your head sometimes and makes you want to stick. And sometimes you try too hard to stick. Bad things happen. You see how Shane Wiskus handles it. This is... Taylor Christopoulos for Nebraska here back on rings. Again. Strength maneuvers held for two seconds each in the air. Maybe two and a half to make sure. Minnesota, Nebraska battling it out here. Nice finish for Taylor. You see Belotsky with the 12, 7, 6 before. Now let's go to Shane Wiskus on vault. He comes into this, trailing in the all around by 13.365. Oh, a disaster. The first flinch from Shane Wiskus, and Minnesota needed that one. They're trying to get in that fourth spot. That's, he can score easily a point higher. And that was a moving rotation for Shane Wiskus. It was, he needed to get the lead. Some big pressure now on him going into the sixth and final rotation with Bach on high bar now. Oh my gosh, and just the, the struggles for Cameron Bach out today unfortunate man that could have been that could have been an ugly landing you know I mentioned it after Mike Moran stuck his vault you know Shane Wiskus is next to go he's a savvy vet and I'm not gonna say this is why he came up short but sometimes you see that happen you get caught up in the emotion and you want to stick so bad and really the way to do that vault is you just in your head you say I'm gonna take a step forward if I stick it great now, Wiskus is leading in the all-around after that anyway. 70.433 over Malone's 70.298. Holy cow, it's going to be, it is going to be a nail biter. Stanford will be on rings. Uh, Minnesota will be on P-bars to decide the all-around individual title. There's the dismount for Buck. Stanford has the overall team lead. 
trying to win back-to-back -back national championships for the Stanford Cardinal. The sixth and final rotation of the national championship coming your way next. Welcome back to Minneapolis. It is the 2021 Men's National Collegiate Gymnastics Championships here from the University of Minnesota. Three-time Olympian, three-time all-around champion, John Roethlisberger, Joel Gadet, the rest of our crew. It is coming down to rotation six. Oklahoma has overtaken Stanford, but John, have the Sooners done it by enough? I don't think so. You know, Oklahoma is going to the high bar. And let's just compare scores from the past for them. You know, they're high on the year as a 67.75. Stanford's on rings, they're high there as a 69.75. So exactly two point difference between their high scores. I know that's not exact apples to apples because of where they got them, when they got those scores, but it is roughly a two point difference. You know, you want to give or take a point and a half. And here's the thing, high bar, it's, it's the ultimate risk reward event. You know, you have a lot higher chance of making mistakes. Stanford, I've said it before, hang on to the rings, hold your strength move, and stick your dismount. Shane Wiskus, despite sitting down his vault, does overtake Brody Malone. 70.433, it's a little bit more than one-tenth of a lead in the all-around. Obviously, Stanford will be um, going to, or excuse me, Minnesota will be going to parallel bars. Stanford working over on the still rings. Is that gap enough for Whiskus? You know, Whiskus is outstanding on parallel bars. You know, in the prelims, he put up a 14-6 on that event. Brody on rings in the prelims, he put up a 14-2-3-3. So you're talking about, based on their first day's score, about a three or Going back and forth. But Shane, if he doesn't win this meet, he is gonna be kicking himself for that ball because that's a, at least a one point swing. Okay, so they, with the scoring change, ignore everything we just said. Brody Malone has now taken the lead, significantly so. 70.698 to Shane Wiskus's 70.433. When you look at the rotations here, Shane Wiskus will go in the fifth of six spots for Minnesota. Mike Moran is competing all around and Brody Malone will go third for Stanford. So we will know Malone's score and have a number to beat for Wiskus at the end of the night. Wow, just the way that all-around competition should go down. Let's talk team real quick, though. Look at Shane Wiskus. He's got to have a short memory, my man. All the great ones do. You put it behind you, good or bad. You got to put it behind you. Now, here's the team total. Stanford is .335 behind the Oklahoma Sooners. We talked about what that margin means as we see. This is Smigliani. Pommel horse specialist for the Ohio State Buckeyes. They were the fifth rated team coming into the championships qualifying yesterday. As a unit, they're also the fifth best pommel horse team in the country. Nice. Almost there. Good finish for the Buckeye. Judah is your leader right now from Michigan. 13.8 on the pommel horse. That is the number to beat as Smigliani pops off. It's gonna be a tough one to beat. Judge is so hypercritical on that event. Michael Giroux for Penn State here, the parallel bars specialist. Somebody that we're gonna hear a lot of going forward. The youngster that Penn State got right out under the nose of Kurt Golder. He's from just outside Ann Arbor, Michigan. He felt a really good kinship though when he visited Penn State. And that's a great get for Randy Jepson. Randy did a great job out there in Happy Valley. He's won Big Ten Championships, NCAA Championships. He's had some amazing individual athletes as well. John, how many followers do you have on TikTok, by the way? Gosh, what, what's that? Uh, Michael Giroux has two million. 
two million followers on that man's TikTok. That's slightly more than I have, I think, if I knew what TikTok was. I don't know what I just said, but it sounds impressive. I want to follow him now. <laughs> Got well, he uses it to help put some eyes on gymnastics, which is a great piece of it to help grow the sport. This is a nice routine. Look at that handstand. That's beautiful. Nice double pike. Three-ten step on the landing. Dexter Redker, just an awesome vault yesterday in qualifying from Ohio State. 14-4-5 is his season best. Shanko two and a half. Big step over the line. Nice vault though, other than the landing was pretty darn good. So Nebraska is a team, they're finishing on vault. That's the same place they finished at Big Tens when they made a huge move. So just to keep an eye on, you know, that third spot. Minnesota's in that spot right now, but Michigan is going to floor while Minnesota's on pale of ours. That's an advantage to Michigan. They're only seven tenths behind the Gophers. So I would expect Michigan to move up into that third spot. Illinois finishes on pommel horse. I don't think they're gonna move up. Nebraska on fault. They are not out of the question for that third podium spot. Parker Clayton here on still rings. Sneakily one of the better ringmen in the country. Had some back issues late in the season, so he fell out of the rankings, but at one point was the third best ringman in collegiate men's gymnastics. Did not compete because of that injury at Big Tens, but huge for Penn State to get him back here, chance to be an All-American on the rings. Score to beat on rings is still Wiskus, 14-4. There are five 14s. Might be another. You gotta love sticking and landing in gymnastics. No better feeling. Full twist and double. All arounder on vault for Ohio State. This is Jesse Tyndall. Of course, we saw his brother Mitch earlier. Double twist. We saw Dexter Rutger. Do the two and a half. He got a 14 2 6, 6 on that. This one a little cleaner, obviously. More of Ethan Dick. The New Zealander. There's good youth between he and Jerome for Penn State. Randy yeah. Jepson's in good hands. Yeah, he, they're going to be uh, fun to watch. And Matt Corbier is here today as well as an individual. He's a freshman for Penn State. Oh. High drama for the Nittany Lions as a team last night. Minnesota edging them out late. To get yeah, it. and Penn State helped them out a little bit. They didn't perform their best down the stretch. And Part of the story of the sport of gymnastics. It's what you do and how that affects the other teams and you get an opportunity, you take it. That's what the Gophers did. John, what's your mentality like as a gymnast right now, particularly if you're Oklahoma and Stanford, as you're waiting, you're at your apparatus, you're warmed up, the individuals are competing before you. How do you deal with the stress of the moment? Well, I, I personally, I always put my blinders on. I didn't watch. I watched my teammates a little bit, but you know, me watching them is not gonna help them, and I need to do what's gonna be best for me. And for me, that was keeping my head down, relaxing, rehearsing my routine, and then I get up there and I just do my routine in a bubble. I pretend like there's just a bubble over that event, and it's just me in that event, and I do my job, and that's how I had to do it. Other athletes, it's different. Some of them can look around and watch, and you know, it's whatever works for you, but that's my mentality. I just look down, I do my thing, and, and that's it. We'll talk about blinders. Matthew Zott has been sitting here for two and a half hours, not competing, waiting for this very moment. His only apparatus tonight is on the still rings. And look at that, Maltese. I can iron my shirt on that thing. <laughs> and that is tough to sit around and wait, but if you're gonna wait to do an event, I'd much rather have it be rings than just about any other event. Again, you hold on, it's strength moves, 
Yes, there's some swing, but man, I would hate to wait till the last event and get up on Palmer Horse, I'll tell you that. After Zada gets into more familiar names, Luce, Malone, Briones, and Gunther to drive down the home stretch for the Cardinal. strength moves, land on your feet, and in my opinion, they will be the NCAA champions. Dylan LeClair to lead off on Nebraska's vault team. Nebraska five points behind Minnesota for the third spot. Probably the fourth spot because Michigan is so close trying to chase them down, and that is gonna help. Now over to the high bar. This is Oklahoma, so this is the head race at the top of the table. Lexi Verdi. The senior, his father is a coach. Oklahoma's got to hit and they've got to stick most of these dismounts. And he does, there's one. 0.335 ahead of the Stanford Cardinal. Still waiting for that first Stanford score on ring. This is Dylan Young vaulting for Nebraska. He went 13-9 last night. Another double twist. His teammate Dylan LeClaire got a 14-366 on that vault with a stuck landing, so it's just Expect a low 14, but they've got some bigger vaults yet to go. Minnesota's first guy on Parallel Bar is a 13-2, so one gymnast for each of those teams. Nebraska picks up the whole point, over a point. All right, let's head back to Stanford here. Chasing Oklahoma at the start of this rotation. Riley Luce here, U.S. national team member, based on his performance at Winter Cup. These are the guys that Stanford is going to ride with down the backstretch. 13 6, 6, 6. That's good. Look at that. Maltese pressed a plange. That is silly hard. My old teammates, Kip Simons, Blaine Wilson, used to do that skill, and I couldn't quite fathom how the human body can even do it. Stanford has already won a national championship today, synchronized swimming. This would be, with a close, the school's 156th national title. Won every year since 1976. Stanford has got the gold standard of athletic programs. Unfortunately, they've even come victim to dropping programs. 11 of them early this year. But, but Riley Luce, my goodness! Woo! With two for two, and after one routine, Stanford picked up five tenths after the first gym. That means they get the lead back over Oklahoma. I don't think they're going to relinquish it. Minnesota in that fight for a podium spot here. Dante McKinney. They're going to have to do a lot better than 13s. It's just tough, especially with Michigan on floor. They've already got a 14 and a high 13 to the Wolverine. So, oh, and you can't do that. Can't give away easy tenths. Finish clean, stuck the landing, extra bonus 10. He knows he's disappointed with that handstand push up in there, but that was not bad. That was a good routine. Here's James Reed on the floor for the Michigan Wolverines. From their stronger gymnasts, he's a senior out of Ann Arbor. Pike double front there. Likes 
those front landings. They can be tricky, but man, he makes them look easy. Line landing, you can't see the ground beneath your feet as you land. Oh, he does the Maltese too. There you go. You know, it's funny because Stanford's coaching staff said, I don't know of anybody other than Riley Lewis that does one. We have now found our second. There you go. You saw those first two scores, a 14-0 and a 13-7-3-3. So they started the rotation seven tenths behind Minnesota. They've already closed that gap. Michigan really, quite frankly, needs to make mistakes on floor if Minnesota's going to stay ahead of them. I don't expect that to happen. Two and a half twist to finish things off there. Michigan came in as the number two ranked team. Right now in a battle to wind up in third and a bronze medal here at the NCAA Championships. Oklahoma and Stanford duking it out one and two. Brody Malone and Shane Wiskus duking it out in the all-around. As we show you Oklahoma now here on the high bar. This is Gracia for Oklahoma. He is their second gymnast up and Stanford's second gymnast up. Oh, big Kovacs put up a 14 one six, six. So really that's the score. You want to compare these scores and athletes. That is what Gracia needs to keep pace with the Cardinal. That is a really tough score to get on the high bar. Mark Williams told us he can get a little anxious when he competes. He just has to go slow. Slow and steady wins this race, which is hard to tell yourself when the stakes are this high at the end. Got to stick it. Huge full twist and double layout. Beautiful stretch in the air. Oklahoma putting it, putting it all out on the line. All right, here we go now with the all-around competition. This is Brody Malone. Oh, look at that Maltese. Holy cow, is that good. 70.698 where Malone stands. Just ahead of Wiskus, .433 in the all-around scores. champion. He was eighth on the still rings in 2019. This is this is fantastic for Dean. He sticks his landing. It is going to be really tough for Shane Wiskus to catch him. He did. Oh my goodness. He looks like a national champion to me. Brody Malone looking to become the first ever National champion in his first two championship meets. That was clutch, man. Tell you what, I don't think that the U.S. would look too bad with Shane Wiskus and Brody Lowell, and maybe a Cameron Bach on that Olympic team. Nebraska's Evan Friley on the vault lineup. They may have carried him out of bounds. Nebraska trying to also move ahead at least into that fourth spot, maybe even catching Michigan. It's gonna be tough though. Michigan is putting up some good scores on floor exercise. Zach Nunez now on the high ball. Gracio 13.333, so things slipping away from the Sooners as they make their bid catch the Cardinal. John Brody Malone with a 14-3-6-6. That is second best on the rings tonight behind Shane Wiskus who went 14-4. That's how close this is. This is close and the score that Shane Wiskus needs and he is coming up here in a couple guys is a 14-6-3-1 to tie and he put up a 14.6 in the qualifying round. So he's got to be basically perfect. As that high bar routine again, the Sooners still just battling over there on the high bar. 
You said 14.63 is what Wiskus needs? 14.631. The good news, if you're a Shane Wiskus fan, is that his season high on parallel bars is 14.75. So it is more than possible. It's possible, but it is going to be really tough. Flora team from Jake Moore. Flora is one of his best apparatuses. Michigan is gonna move ahead of Minnesota for the third spot. The question you gotta ask yourself is, what about Nebraska? They were four points behind Michigan, but they're on the highest scoring event vault. But I tell you what, with routines like this right here, I don't think it's gonna be possible. This is gonna be as high as just about any of those vaults from the Cornhuskers. It's looking very much like a bronze podium finish for the Wolverines. Moore's a defending All-American here on floor. They're trying to work his way back up to that status here, the Big Ten champion of 2019. This is Charlie Giles now vaulting. He's got a 15-2 start value on this event. The older of the Giles brothers. Chanko, two and a half twist. Very nicely done. Little slight knee bend in the air. Three tenths step on the landing, but that's going to be a mid high 14 for sure. Now here is Shane Wiskus for a national all around championship. John, he needs a 14 6 3 1 to catch Brody Malone of Stanford. And he is fantastic on this event, but when you, got, when you say you got to be perfect, he has got to be perfect. I thought that 14-6, to be quite frank with you, that he put up in the qualification was a little low. He starts at a 16. And that means the judges found a 1.4 off. And that just gives you an idea. A visually perfect routine in men's gymnastics is going to have a point off. It's just the way the rules are. They are brutal. But this routine, could come down to the landing. Mike Burns told us his performance last night was an epic one he would never forget. What will he say about tonight? Oh, that landing right there might be the difference, but I tell you what, Shane Wiskus came into these national championships and the soil of the very university that said, Minnesota will be no more. He turned to them in this crowd and said, you will not forget Minnesota gymnastics. Hats off to Shane Wiskus, what a performance. If I can steal a line from a man named John Roethlisberger though, it's not over until he says it is. It is not. And we'll see what the scoring looks like with Ian Gunther in the anchor spot on rings for Stanford. And Stanford again, doing what they have to do. Brody Malone, 14-3-6-6. Brandon Grion's a 13-8-3-3. All scores higher than Oklahoma on rings. This is Stanford Cardinals Day. And a stick to seal a potential back-to-back -back national title. They are. I'm going to just tell you right now, I know we like to wait for the official number, but Stanford is going to be your national champions dominant. Ethan Gunther, or excuse me, Ian Gunther knew it immediately. Broke out in absolute tears. Last up on high bar now here for Oklahoma. This is Gamaris, second in the country on this apparatus, but he would have to be huge. Beyond huge. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna happen, but Oklahoma had some challenges this season. Didn't have the big guns that maybe they are used to having, certainly compared to Stanford. Those big start values. Twist and double talk, and why not? They've been sticking them right and left on high bar. Oklahoma Sooners, gutty performance. This is Mike Moran on the all around now. This will not count for a team score. John, we do have a score for Shane Wiskus. 
14.433. It is not good enough to win the all-around. He is, however, your reigning, defending, and still parallel bar national champion. And that's a heartbreaker for Shane, especially after that ball. Just had to put that on his feet. Didn't even have to be good. Just put it on his feet. As Mike Moran finishes with a nice double front half, nails the landing. And certainly that is going to be one that uh, Shane Wiss is going to kick himself over for a long time. But man, talk about a great performance from this Minnesota Gopher team. They came into these championships just struggling, not hitting routines, not performing the way they hoped to. And they came in, made the finals, and hats off to them. But how about hats off to the back-to-back -back national champs? The Stanford Cardinal put it away. They win the national championship tonight for the second time in three years. We'll put the button on it. Back-to-back -back titles for the Cardinal. Welcome back to Minneapolis. The 2021 Men's Gymnastics Championships have come to a close. And for the second time in three years, but for back-to-back -back championships, it is the Stanford Cardinal. 414, 521 over a 411, 591. And Stanford comes away with its third title in a decade, 11, 19, and 21. It is back-to-back -back for the Cardinal. They put forward their second consecutive score, not counting qualifications, of over a 4-10. They were awesome down the backstretch when the team finally came together. And they just had the firepower. They had the start values. And you know, it's funny, the, the securitous route that the Stanford Cardinal took to this point, head coach Tom Galimi, I talked to him a few months ago. They were talking about coming down to my camp in Tennessee to train because they had nowhere to go. They shut things down in their county and, and guys were spread out around the country. And I said, come on down. They ended up not doing it. But you know, you just, you start to find ways. And I think a lot of coaches in, in all sports this year, this, regardless of where they finished, this was their best coaching job of their career to get just through the season and, and get guys on the floor and compete. Hats off to them, but he geared everything to this night. I mean, That's think, all that mattered to him. Yeah, think about where Stanford was. And we said this earlier, Tom Galimi had at one point denied, designed 39 different training programs because guys were in different places. Six were in Texas, wound up not training for the, or not competing in the Winter Cup because they were away from the team. They were training for it. Texas lost power, so they couldn't wind up training. They were Crazy. dealing with that. He's got three guys, including Riley Luce, training in Sacramento. He's got some guys at home. He's got some guys. Um, in uh, on campus at Stanford, you're trying to put together a gymnastics team in a thousand different places. They come together March 13th as a unit, everyone in the right order yep. for the first time. That's four meets ago. Yeah, no, it was a phenomenal performance, and they needed some virtual competitions. There's a new platform that's been created called Vertius yep. that allowed them to do virtual competitions. You can't do it in any other sport. Created, created by a by Stanford a, alum, a by Stanford the way. alum that created that, and and. If it hadn't been for that, they wouldn't have had scores that they could use to qualify to these meets. And I mean, talk about just a mess that they had to navigate. There's a word, there's a two word phrase I would use to describe the season for a lot of these teams. I'm not gonna say it on air, but man, it, it, it's a t hats off to them. And, and especially even the teams that aren't holding a championship trophy like the Stanford Cardinal right now, you guys all have to be proud of what you've done this season. I'm thankful for it and uh, we, we're, we were treated to some incredible gymnastics this evening. The Stanford Cardinal are your gymnastics champions here in 2021. It is national title number 156 for the Stanford Cardinal athletic program. Wrap up the all around, we'll come back next. We have crowned a national champion here in Minneapolis. It is the Stanford Cardinal for the second time in as many championships. Their seventh all time. As you take a look at the final standings, they beat Oklahoma for the second time in as many opportunities, 2019, 2021. Michigan is third. John, you think kicking yourselves a little bit for the Wolverines. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you look at the top, Stanford well deserved this championship. Oklahoma, I think they had a great performance. I think it was the start value difference, but Michigan 
they could have found four points. And four points on the scoreboard isn't a small amount necessarily, but they could have found four points in their sleep, starting with Pommel Horse, four points below their season high. And, and it just wasn't their night, and certainly they'll be disappointed. But hey, Stanford Carlo, they did their job. They came in, they executed the game plan, and they're the champs again. So Stanford is victorious in the team competition. We did have individual competitions to get through tonight as well, and the all-around competition did not disappoint. And I, I, I love it when I'm right, Joel. I told you it was gonna be an epic all-around title. I thought the, the Michigan Wolverines would be in there as well, but it came down to literally the last skill that Shane Wiskus did, the double front on parallel bars. He took a 3 tenth step. That would have been the difference, but you've gotta tip your hat to Brody Malone. This kid is the real deal. I love watching him. He is poised. He just looks unflappable, and he does high difficulty, too. It's not like he goes out there and he does, you know, boring gymnastics. He is pushing the envelope, and time and time again, you hit gymnastics, you hit six routines, you're gonna give yourself a chance to win. Brody Malone did that well-deserved. How about Brody Malone? He's been to two gymnastics championships in his career in the NCAAs. He's won them both. And we said early, he kind of flew under the radar because of the attention the other all-arounders got. It's weird to say that. It, it, it shouldn't be that way. And and maybe he's, you know, maybe he's a Rodney Dangerfield of gymnastics a little <laughs> bit. Hasn't quite got their respect, but I think he's winning at the right time. And the Olympic trials are right around the corner. If you're at home, write that name down. Brody Malone, Shane Wiskus, Cameron Bach, Paul Judah, those guys among others are gonna be in that battle. Individual winners, Gage Dyer on the floor exercise and on the vault. He had highs on both of those apparatuses. Well-deserved, Ian Skirky on the pommel horse. Wins for Illinois, Wiskus does take home, we said the parallel bars title, he also wins the ring championship. And then Brody Malone adds in the high bar title, so that's now five career individual championships for Brody Malone. John, the NCAA record for career championships is seven, and Brody Malone is a junior, so. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's probably gonna get there. You know, t hats off to him, and, and I just gotta say, you sit back and you look at the athletic performances on this floor today, and you think about how men's gymnastics has just been in battle for years now, but these guys, unappreciated in the world of college sports, largely, they, they, they participate and compete on a very small footprint on their campuses, but they, I challenge anybody out there to find pound for pound better athletes, better people than these young men doing the sport of gymnastics. It's an amazing sport. We're gonna have to find a new way to do it because the mission of, of universities isn't the most important thing, it seems, anymore. And we need to take that mission on us and, and keep the sport alive because I tell you what, this is incredible feats of athleticism and we can't let it go. Well, I'll tell you much. From the beginning, you called it. Stanford came in with the highest degree of difficulty. They wind up uh, victorious. And then Brody Malone uh, wins in the all around as well. Tom Galimi leaves with his own hardware. He is the national coach of the year. Yeah, and he coached me here at Minnesota for a few years as I trained for the 2000 Olympics. Um, he was there with me and uh, he's a great coach, does a great job. He's a hilarious individual. and. A lot of fun to have in the gym with you every day. These are the end of season awards that were announced just a couple of days ago. The Nissan Emery, of course, five Minnesota golfers all time have won the Nissan Emery. Uh, one of them is us, it's not me. Uh, Gage Dyer, the specialist of the year. Man, did he back that up or what? Yeah, these guys, I mean, right across the board there. So Gage Dyer, man, just dynamic. Competing hurt. I mean, just a ridiculous specimen of an athlete. And, you know, the Cal gymnast, Newfield, he, you know, got to give credit to Cal and what they've done. And uh, of course, you know, the big dogs are in there as well. It's a, it's a great, uh, great spread of talent. And that brings it to a close here for us in the 2021 Men's Gymnastics Championships. That'll wrap it up from Minneapolis. The Stanford Cardinal win their seventh national champion, Brody Malone, your all-around champion for the second time in as many tries. For John Roethlisberger and our entire crew, my name is Joel Gadell. Good night from the Twin Cities.